Hello and welcome back to Ark Knights. I'm Luce, and as you can see, I did in fact finish off the reward tree and get the UI. Thanks to my efforts last stream, in fact. And since I'm close to the end, I figured let's do that for tonight. The whirlpool that is passion. All right, we need to do this on adverse environment. Looks like we're going to be at the final boss, because last time, the Sanguinarch, the Vampire King, decided he's had enough of our shit and is going to stop us. Terrain enemies will differ in places. Throne of Blood. Alright, looks like I might need a couple... A pluma with skill one. see here. I think Cezerni's fine, especially with enemies that are potentially coming. April's gonna be good for the pushing the payloads, but at the same time, I probably don't need Totter anymore, but I do need... You know what? Let's bring Valarquin. She's been pretty good at helping us push the... As probably don't need Pure Stream. Let's bring someone fast redeploy. Travel. You want to go together? I figure I should finish off this event sooner rather than later, especially since you know they always have incentives to try and push that. Ah, so we are in the story here. We're trying to take over the Faramit, but for a few moments, perhaps more than a few moments, no dark sarcasm dare to speak. Yeah, the Sanguinarch has arrived because we're trying to take the giant Faramit skeleton they're using as an airship, but it seems he has managed to get all he needs to finish the whatever ritual he's trying to activate. And it's probably in our best interest to stop him, so let's do that. For a few minutes, perhaps more than a few moments, no sarcasm dare to speak. It takes away all things and shapes all things. What is that? The blessing the Sanguinar left the sarcasm hasn't faded. But just now, could the doctor have been talking about... The doctor have been talking about... Blood arises from the spine of the ferrum, apparently only drop, but it draws all eyes. It leaves the intertwined bones, dancing in the dim cave, rising in freshly spar... Cold sunlight, a drop of blood, just one drop. Pure blood, glorious blood. It's been wounded, it's been betrayed, forgotten to the point of being spurned. For millennia, the land called a disaster treated it, treated it as an enemy and trampled it until it abandoned its glory and defiled its body. The Tikaz became Sarkaz and their homeland lost. Today, the blood of those with a homeland returns a mystery. Precursors became the Sarkaz. Today, the those the land turns mystery. All men across the lands pay tribute to it. The bead of blood dissolves as silence reigns. No explosives, no vibrations, no grand visions or chaotic whispers. Even if blocked by the hills, all eyes turn towards Londinium. At this point, all the storms called by the Shard feel like nothing but a harmless drizzle. Now, what gathers off the tower can no longer just be called a dark cloud. The storm has become a cradle. The Spine Guardians. They're getting taken down easy enough. Hoder, W, look alive. Do it. W, where are the bombs you buried? Hit your detonator now. You know, tell me twice. No guesses. Hoderer, we only take on the opponents we know we can handle. I know. W's bombs tore through the defensive line. We've got a breakthrough. Tangled with them for way too long. Ami and Logos went on ahead of us. They'll deal with the worst of our troubles. As for the others, follow the path they cleared and climb the Faramut's bones with those gangways. Ah, damn it, those guys. Don't let them get any further. Commander Osala is pulling up the gangway. The trembling nerve bundles begin to close and the bone gangways start to drift. The Faramut has decided not to let anyone walk upon its spine. The traitors die here. We'll take their corpses to the tent of the Najer King to nourish our next victory. Huh? Buried mines under the bones. Felt pretty good. Hoder, Ines, get ready. Shockwave incoming. The rising airflow of the Grand Explosion sends three mercenaries to the air. Hoder adjusts his posture with some effort, looking down to see the cave engulfed in flames. The Farron must seems to sense something. It swings its body, its white tailbone slashing at the three like a whip. 
W, three grenades, downward diagonal. Good idea. This is the last time I play along with your explosive shenanigans. The red-haired Sarkaz kicks up dust, and then the black-haired Caprine weaves darkness. The scraps form beams, and the shadows form steps. An invisible staircase, stinking of gunpowder, spirals upward and pierces the chest cavity of the hovering skeleton. skeleton. The mercenaries rush into the hollow interior. This way to the core of the skeleton. Our target is Osala. Find her and we can get control of this thing we're walking on. Are you too sure we can get the skeleton? Sounds a little reckless, almost like robbing a caravan. We have to, otherwise Ami and Logos are basically fighting for nothing. So we open the door, toss the driver out, grab the keys, bam my car now. Did you see the illusions this thing made? Moving between its bones, you still haven't figured anything out? This isn't some obscure story. Should I have figured something out? I forgot, you don't care to learn history. A few hundred years ago, the Sarkaz killed a pheromone that almost destroyed Kazdel. After it fell, there were various claims as to where it ended up, and one of them was that its consciousness didn't die with it, that it was split up, sealed into a bunch of different items. Now it seems that claim was at least partially true, at least with the unconscious shell. It was par carefully collected before this war even started. They spent a lot of effort to modify it, and sure enough, it's playing a big role in the mil war for the military commission. Different items, huh? Rosala never carried a pocket watch before, not like she was ever on time in the scar market. But if her watch is holding the pheromone's consciousness, it's probably already very fragmented. The skeleton we're standing on is not exactly dead, but didn't have much more than basic nerve reflexes. She can only guide those basic reactions. We just need to pay more attention to them. A rain of bolts falls to the gaps of the bones, followed by the eerie glow of Sarkaz witchcraft. Take cover! I still find it hilarious that the cutscene where we first meet this thing was in the tutorial stage of all times. Really weird, but I guess they decided to make this tutorial uh, story relevant instead of just a side thing. Sure, just avoid the nerve bundles that can strike at you and watch out for sudden bone spear thrusts. Nothing to worry about. After all, this fellow's been stripped down to nothing but bleach bones. But there's still you, Asala. You're more dangerous than in this half-dead pharaoh, but done with your important work? I might be, if you weren't here to bother me. Is this bitch the commander here? She's pretty rough on her own skeleton. Those bolts are all stuck in the bones now. Want me to pull them out? Help pull them out? I've got a pretty handy method. Cough, cough. It's a ah, psycho. Trying to kill my men right in front of me. What are you think too little of me? Dangerous and chaotic power gathers in Usala's fingertips as she prepares to cast her arts. But a moment before she can cast, a black shadow crawls up her ankle. <sighs> Saul has to take a step to the right to shake off the persistent entanglement of the shadow. Her arts go out of control, and red glow shoots out from the damaged seam to the spine. The sound of a muffled explosion booms from a distant cave wall. You've gotten rusty, Sala. I guess you've been doing well for yourself at the Scar Market. You're a bunch of survivors, I'll give you that. Back in Kazdell, I made quiet bets with the old-timers on how many of you would actually collect on those jobs you were taking. As long as I bet on Hodor, Inez, and later the Psycho W, I pretty much always made money. Sounds to me like you owe us a big cut. That's the famous sharp tongue on this W. Haven't you learned anything from Inez? This time, though, you took a wrong turn. Two kings of the royal court are here, going all out, not to mention the King of Sarkaz. This place is never going to be a safe haven where you can escape the war. Not the kind of place you could survive. What about you? You heard about Theris' trump card over in Londinium, assuming the consequences out there are way beyond anything ever anyone's ever seen before. You still think it's a fair price to pay for the Sarkaz to rebuild Kazdale? It's enough little chit-chat. Soldiers, end them here while there's still time! Major, look on the bones! Blood crawls along the bones, creeping towards them. It's filling the place, overflowing damage gaps, connecting a long, cold body. It's the Sanguine Arc. Looks like he's ready. It begins to grow warmer. Power accumulates in the bones again. The spines sway left and right, oddly creaking. The pheromut resumes its roving. So much, so much blood. Masala, where'd all this blood come from? As if you need to ask, it's courtesy, it's courtesy of that homicidal sanguinarch. He slaughtered the place clean. No, their wrists. 
So all our men have all become bleeding wounds. All have bleeding wounds on the wrist. Drip, drip, it starts beads of blood, then ribbons, rivers. How much blood is in a human body? It's not even two gallons, if I remember right. It's a gallon and something. The blood flowing out of the guards joins the blood stains over the bleach bones. I offer your highness my blood, Prince of the Crimson Court. May you hunt unimpeded. Let our blood form for you, your swift chariot. Sala, stop it, you lost your marbles! The Ferenma, it's about to move again. The currents of history are about to sweep this place away. That bitch wants to go down with us! I'm not controlling it. Blood has replaced muscle, tendons, and tomorrow. Isn't that enough to control it? The guard's exposed skin now visibly pallid. Sala's complexion is also looking worse. Finally, the flow stops. A sarcasm soldier will give everything for his liege, not only his blood. Their skin shrivels, and finally they collapse. It's been an honor and privilege, man. You stood with me to the end. We'll meet among the myriad souls. I told you, the skeleton isn't a place to escape. It isn't a place to survive anymore. I even... Yeah, she was planning to leave alive to begin with. Hurry, we need to take cover in the cabin. The illusion's already manifesting. We don't know where they might go. It's creating waves. Look out. Uh, where does the vampire want to take us? Hoder? I'm here with her. She's lost too much blood. Whether or not she lives is all up to her now. You might as well leave me inside, Hoder. I'd rather die with my men. You've killed so many old friends. There's no way you can suddenly grow hard today. You can use you. I told you, the skeleton's out of my control now. You also said you're loyal to the commission. If you think the military is going to hope for Kazal to become a nation, why is that guy calling himself a regent? Why does he need Theresa? Why does he think winning this war will secure a future for Kazdale? What is Theresa's thinking? Whatever, we'll talk after we take down this ferment. What are you, are you going to do? Our goal hasn't changed. We're going home. That was supposed to be the skeleton's final mission. What? It has a name. We call the code named it Lifebone. Nobody uses it much, but General Manfred named it. He was talking just like you. Just like me, Manfred. We're enemies, so I'm done with questions. I'm just gonna wait to die. Guess I'm making... Today is kind of an answer. You really think General Manfred's blind? Think he doesn't know what you're up to? I mean, you can only talk about going home if you manage to survive your run-in with the Sanguinarch. <laughs> you're right. So... I'm gonna bl borrow your watch. Perhaps due to her blood loss, she's pa basically powerless to resist. He takes a lovely pocket watch without trouble. It's cold metal cases engraved with intricate witchcraft runes. The watch is ticking backwards. A murmur that no one... Tears fills his mind for a moment. It really is louder than I imagined. Odor grits his teeth and leaves behind the loud whispers. He searches for within it for the true dormant consciousness of the Ferenmut. Ferenmut who wanders this land, you are not dead. You've decided to continue your existence in a different way. You're still here, aren't you? A center of, at the center of disaster, a silent ferment slowly swims. Where it wanders, there's only ruined emptiness. The past lifts it. The future is separated by it. A figure stands in front. Stop, ferment, young vampire. You're about to step into Kazdalar City. The people here will refuse your visit. Choose another path, or else the Sarkaz will slaughter you. This is your only warning. Oh, very well. My brother's directed us to forbid its advance. Obey the will of the King of Sarkaz. Sanguine court to me. Powerful witchcraft condenses in the vampire's hands, and giant crimson spear falls from the sky. One massive wound after another pierces it. The silent ferment finally speaks as if waking from a dream. Castello, oh, I have slept for too long. When did it become a city? King of Sarkaz, is he not your soul chosen leader? Why is he not standing before me? An image that all have forgotten is shattered by the moving ferment. It has not roamed in centuries. It gently moves its fins, now only bleach bones, pushing through layer after layer of space. The one who once killed it now bestows warmth upon it again. The skeleton searches for a suitable place to stop. Until finally. The three take control and manipulate could manipulate it to a degree. The Sanguinarch uses blood to command the Ferma Skeleton. Finally.
The massive skeleton hovers over an endless sea. The cave, the battle, even the slowly rising sun are nowhere to be seen. Instead, there is only a calm sky, sea, and stars. All the cruelty that occurs on the continent have never existed. It seems it never existed here. This is beyond the horizon, beyond civilization. This is what remains of the skeleton for the Prince of Blood to find at last. An untouchable realm. The Crimson River connects with a dark blue nerve and intertwines tightly. The slender murderer closes his eyes and feels the pounding rhythm of his victim. With blood for reins, he harnesses the creature that can only wander through history. After the, his illusory visions and memories of the past, you indeed brought me a more valuable scene. Why are the two of you, in the face of such a scene, fizzle these frankly laughable arts in your hands? Have a look around. Take some time to admire it all. This is the tomb I've chosen for you. It was daytime a moment ago, but here... Dark night and endless sea. The stars are changing. I've never heard of any place like this. Not in any records, not in any legends. So this must be distant enough. Yes, I do wonder how far we are from Kazdel now. This land is all... This land they all call Terra. Is it too vast or too small? Ami, oh, yeah, be careful. It's blood. It's sublimating. He awakened his blood with the witchcraft. Oh, don't talk like an outblood banshee. You know, I treat pseudobloods as equal... Pure bloods as equals. Perhaps when combined with the Crimson Court, which has spent eons seeking purity, you have a more, been more deeply influenced by Originium. But well, among the Sarkas, you're quite formidable. Come, let's not be stingy with my blessing. You cannot reject my gift. Now that I've awakened your power, you're finally worthy of facing me. Let me hear the screech of your knell, if it can truly darken the moonlight. Crimson ripples spread. At this moment, the sky is no longer the sky, nor is the sea the sea. They're only reflections of blood. The sanguine arc smiles faintly, a blood soul pumping like a heart in his palm, reflecting the face of the young banshee in a structure as deep as life itself. <clears throat> and then the blood soul shatters. I write, therefore I command. The night conceals me from death. Another incantation, another of your shallow incantations. You have talent, no doubt about that. The flapping of your lips and doodles of your bone pen are enough to humiliate the so-called origini moths of the common people. And yet, why do you resist your heritage so? Show me your true self, King of Court, Banshee. Duquarel. Duquarel. Sanguine Archer Vampires, Prince of Blood, demands you show your true self. Enough, Vampire. Hold on, Logos. Black arts erupt from her girl's hand, parting the sea of blood, but the blood does not yield, it roars. The King of Sarcas's arts dissolve and shatter, and the red surges more intensely. Oh, King of Sarcas, I nearly forgot you were here. A rabbit king. Look at you. You didn't re even receive a scrap of my boon. Caught his blood. Tedious and ordinary. No, what, no matter how hard I try to scrape something together, I, I can't find a shred of talent or power. I can't even say your blood is mixed or impure, as those adjectives still imply an expectation of return to purity. For you, those are chaotic bloodlines I prove of, but they're all without a doubt formidable or magnificent. But what do you have? A laughable motivation? A shallow conviction? I don't have an answer to you. I just have to defeat you. I don't have to answer you. Is this art king of sarcasm stealing a bit of attainment from other chaotic and disorderly? Nothing even the level of the banshee's little tricks born of his little rebellion of his mind, even less that pair of siblings. Amia, don't let him provoke you. As it stands, his power is still growing. We need to end this fast. I know. We need to get back under clear skies. In the past, I once slew a so-called king of sarcasm. It wasn't particularly difficult. I suspect your end will be the same this time. Your question with, with black... You question me with black blades. I'll answer you with the gift of death. Alright, we finally get to fight the king of the vampires. <laughs> now, as per usual, I'm probably going to get carried by ebon holes here. But, of course, I'm probably going to have to do this several times, because as we saw with uh, 1320, uh, it, this is a chapter is not messing around anymore. A smith's gotta be ready to pay the debt accrued by the weapon she forges. My sword's gonna cleave your bodies and values alike. Dracariel, Reg Regents Crimson, host of Crimson Court, master of all Bloodborne.
We finally get to fight him because we finally know now finally know his true name. And this is interesting music. Damn, believe it you've written across your face. Please deliver my visions to your masses. They have no power to withstand. I see, so I can't just uh buy believe a treat. All right, so I have to take this seriously, it seems. I'm gonna have to get a medic out sooner rather than later. A fumer is probably ideal for this, but we'll see, I guess. Actually, I might want to put... Ever inevitable. Within expectations. Interest all right, so he's the fact he is capable of spawning new thingies is something I need to really pay attention to. Be ready at a moment's notice for the info I sent back. Oh, this aura is a pain in the rear. He has a gimmick I'm not a fond of. Not to stab believe it written across your face. They have no path to escape. Oh, I forgot to bring Evan. I have received That's my... slightly a problem. I do in fact need Evan for this. That said. Also leave a treat. Don't panic. Let's see if I can uh Alright, since Sanguinark appears right away, let's take a look here. Here we are. BB for Prince of Blood, I assume. A drop of Tika's blood once flowed through his body, and it's the last remaining purity that retur has returned to the land. Now he has a sight sound on the King of Sarkaz again. He smiles, declaring he has already slain one such, and plans a bid farewell of the final one. First form, Moon Devouring Blood Mist. Releases a searing blood mist sent around a target, inflicting increasing amounts of arts to allied units within, while reducing attack speed and increasing redeployment time. Pieces of blood amber affected by blood mist will turn to spawn. Blood surge. When defeated, the skill will activate four times, selecting one target each time. I mean, prioritizing units have not been hit. Deals arts damage to the target and all units within the adjacent four and stuns them. Ugh. When defeated, it turns to the throne of blood and revives after a period of time. Enters second form when the throne of blood is destroyed. Takes greatly reduced damage and increases the. Okay, so yeah, Eben's true dan. Eben and, uh,. Alright, so Necrosis true dam effectively being true damage is gonna be huge here. When struck by anti-witchcraft responsible bomb, destroys the corresponding bomb loading point and releases blood surge twice. Crimson Edict continuously spawns blood amber around the units for a period of time. Afterward, the blood mist will be released centered around this unit. This does not sound fun. This power is not mine. However, God's Island has me. Uh, it seems like that's Art's damage, so I could make cheese it with Nightingale, but Nightingale is absolutely a meta healer, and I want Let to kind of minimize that. And immature obsessions. Curbing the enemy's weak points post haste. The intel work began long beforehand. The intel will not leave it written across your face. As you ask. They have no path to escape. Please deliver my vision to the masses. The intel work began long beforehand. They have no position to evade. Please, accept my advice. They have no power to evade. 
Oh crap, she can't hold them? No, not while Sanguinark is there. That's no good, I just don't have the DP for that. We should go. Before the next wave has us drowned. All Sanguinark seems to do is a lot of frustrating stuff, that's for sure. What does he do again? It's not this guy, this guy. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's arts damage to all while also significantly reducing attack speed, which is very annoying. I could potentially put La Pluma in the northern area and have Hymor in the southern one. Hymor is. They're not too different, I just forgot to get Lapluma's module, and I was a bit lazy and didn't get it here. Well, not lazy. I only have so many of those module blocks because I straight up ran out after Ebens. And uh, there's too many coming up. I mean, I actually am going to have to hold off getting Mud Rocks, especially since while hers is nice, she functions just fine without it, so I need it. Come on. I need to figure out a, how this strategy is going to work. A smith's got to be ready to pay the debts accrued by the weapon she forges. Auf eure Plätze! Let's establish it. I can read you like an open book. Oh, this is not good. They have no way to advance. Forish or perish. Mm, she gets close, but he really makes that rough. A comprehensive plan must include Especially since he it seems to be global from what I can see. That's mildly okay. annoying. So evacuate ASAP. Mm. Oh wait. Destroy this intel before we leave. Uh the issue is I can't get everyone out at all, quickly at all. It's not gonna happen. And that reduced attack speed means killing those things is not in the cards. Could try siege. Tell me, is this battle inevitable? Not ideal, but. Sometimes I gotta make do. War. Ever inevitable. Auf eure Plätze! We'll take them out all at once. Not an ideal position, but I don't have a choice. Especially when you face a Lysanian. Do you really think you'll get away? My rule is to balance your lives hanging. 
Arts, I need arts resistance for those guys, but... Personally? Crap, the fact they're all stunned is not helping. Oh, I'm sure I gotta waste my precious time on the likes of you third rate amateurs. Damn it. They have no power to withstand. Phase two, or whatever. I'll just learn phase two right now. I'm gonna die anyway, so might as well make sure. He's just creating a ton more. All the redeploy. Oh right, he significantly increases the redeployment time. That is a pain. Careful of music on the battlefield. They have no power to withstand. Past the temple as gold as a clarinet. Alright, so only one of these has to make it to the end. I could easily do this if I had Nightingale instead. But she's meta, so, hmm. Could rush his phase two a bit. It seems like that might not be a bad idea. It looks like there's not nearly as many as to require La Pluma, and in fact, I am going to absolutely need people who can be healed. Do these have silenceable abilities? Not really. Mm, uh, uh. I guess gravel could have been nice as a blocker. Palace might not be half bad either. Well, let's keep her, but let's replace La Pluma with Palas, unless I'm... Mm -mm. I mean, his skill charges pretty quickly, so I can go with that. But she only has one block, and that's kind of a problem with endlessly respawning foes. Her issue is not the, uh tough enemies, it's the... <clears throat> I 
I no, I need someone who can multi-attack because this alone's not going to be enough. Almost could probably be a good shield, I guess, but <clears throat> the slowed attack speed is absolutely a major problem. I definitely need April to help push the payload. I, I could just replace Shining with... I could probably do it, but... Hmm. Well, I do have another AoE healer, but... New data used to assemble package build. I'm not sure this is going to work, if we're honest. But I guess... I'm hoping maybe AoE healing might make up for being low, because her ability, as you saw, it's 100 SP. That takes absolutely ages to charge up. Avoid becoming engulfed in snow, <clears throat> as were the fates of many. What a pain. I have received Not the most ideal situation to be in, but I can theoretically get all these guys. She does not have the bulk for this, yeah. It's no good. I could probably do it with Blaze, but Blaze is meta. We can hardly call this ending good. Are you the one who just got a headache? Not me? Mm. Again, I know I could just use the meta unit and this would all be over, but it's just not a satisfying ending. For want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. I am at your command. We'll take them out all at once. Target marked. Oh, damn you! Well, it doesn't help. She's that perfumer is only four stars. She absolutely cannot deal with any. Things would get a whole lot nastier for everyone involved. I could just use read alter, and that would fix a lot of this. But again, I want to try and beat it without. So let's see. Maybe I should try putting shining there instead. Although she's not. Great at it. 20 SP is a lot. Yeah, that's 14, 17. And Paprika... I don't know if Paprika's gonna be able to handle it either. Give Paprika a go. 
I don't think it's gonna matter, but the fact she could chain heal to heal people outside of her range might actually be helpful in my particular setup here. I've finished tuning. I may perform now. What a pain. Charging. Don't get careless just because I'm here. Please deliver my visions to the eyes. A warrior must be ready to face death on the battlefield. Tremble in my music is your honor. Get lost. Yes. Gonna have to use an actual tank for this, but I think you would think we should be able to handle this at least. I should be able to force a taunt out of this. Alright, good. Targeting Cerny. Careful of music on the battlefield, especially when you face a Lysanian. You dare strike my shield with your spear? That's gonna end with you in pieces! Initiation is abating parts, you know. That's unfortunate, but I think we might still be able to do this. See if we can at least get to phase two here. Nope. We should go before the next wave has us thrown. Hmm. The good news is paprika and tilapsis. No, tilapsis isn't enough. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure if I use nightingale, that would actually fix everything. I don't have lumen raised, or I might try him, but I think multi healing is going to be the key here. Especially since art's damage is so heavy. Because phase two honestly does not really look all that threatening, if we're honest. I mean, I could just use Yada Walter and clear that to crowd out the moment to Neon starts getting low, but I don't think that's going to help here. Or because that's still meta. Redeployment times are this bad. Maybe I should actually make sure I have a more fast redeploy because Puzzle's been doing a lot of work this chapter. Doctor, my public activity with Rhodes Island is better kept on the minimal. Because if I wanted to just win, I could easily just whip out all my meta six stars and obliterate him the instantly. Gotta be ready to pay the debt accrued by the weapon she forges. Be ready at a moment's notice for the info I sent back.
Let's establish a code. Don't leave it written across your face. Target marked. I need two healers because one is simply not cutting it. The intel work began long beforehand. When tis a choice of life and death, why shouldst thou lay down thy arms? I have received a knife. A knife, a life. Weapons are the basis for society. Who died? Ah, damn it. I can't lose Valarquin, there's no question. Valarquin, anyone with Necrosis damage is key to winning this. Before the next wave has us drowned. I could put Eben in that center one, it'd be nice, but I'm not sure I should be having... I guess I could put someone in the south area, a healer in the south, Telopsis in the south area. I do think Telopsis is going to be key here because that sped up uh, ability is going to be really good. Do you need me to tell you all? You seem like a pack of children at a holiday camp. Expanded redeploy is not something I'm really too worried about. Oh shit. I should be, however, be worried about that bo losing the bottom, which I just did. Yeah, I need to remove puzzles sooner rather than later. That's the thing. He can't hold a lane. Did I mess up again? Yeah, puzzle can't hold a lane. He can kill stuff, but he can't hold a lane. That's siege. Siege is much better at that. A smith's got to be ready to pay the debts accrued by the weapon she forges. The end every look you take has value. Don't get careless just because I'm here. Let's establish a code. Charging. Don't worry, everyone hanging in there. The intel work began long beforehand. When tis a choice of life and death, why shouldst thou lay down thy arms? Please deliver my mission. That's not good. Extraordinary melodies can only be played by the soul as a clarinet. 
Eben, I was kind of hoping you'd focus the boss and not that random guy, but... He revives them near himself, I guess. Terrible. If I really let myself loose, things would get a whole lot nastier for everyone involved. I could borrow someone, but yeah, Savage isn't cutting it. Should be Palace after all, I guess. We'll see how this goes. My mistake was deploying uh, April at that time because she needs to be deployed to take out the bring the payload over. The good news is the boss going south means it's a lot easier to deal with. It's a lot easier Stay to push a. And keep in contact. Remember, the mission comes second. Your lives come first. Mm -hmm. Let's establish. Don't leave it written across your face. Not one of you is getting away! Target marked. Don't worry! Bastards! Scram, I'm busy here! The intel work began long beforehand. Gonna have to put a stronger way. tank here. You really think you'll get away? Initiation. Initiation activated R2 method. Oh, you dare strike my shield with your spear? That's gonna end with you in pieces! Palace, help at Nian. Faster to pass the gold as a clarinet. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. They have no way to advance. Alright, those guys will be t easy to take care of. Okay, the fallout should take care of them there. A night, my body burns at over 1,400 degrees. They have no way to Oh no, he's gonna blow it up when he touches it. Oh no, that's only his phase two. No, he ate it. Oh, 
Oh no, damn it, they went past. Then there was three. <sighs> Terrible. If I really let myself loose, things would get a whole lot nastier. I was able to smoothly get the bomb bef through involved. before. What? Stop now. Right, the Sanguine Arc was dead at the time the bomb actually went through. So that's the main problem. I can't believe I need three healers, basically, since Palace is also healing Nian. But at the same time, she has to hold Sanguine Arc. Putting Eben in the center there wasn't a bad idea, at the very least. I guess I just need to work on this a bit better. But yeah, his redu his significantly increasing of the redeploy time real is a lot more painful than it looks on paper. Prolonged casting makes my headaches flare up, and I even hallucinate if I'm unlucky. Let's make it a blitzkrieg, shall we? Let's establish and leave it written across your face. Not an ideal situation to be in. I need to have that earlier, but. No good. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention and Nian dropped like a rock because she has no magic resistance. Are you the one who just got a headache? Not me? These guys deal- do these girls do, Yeah, they deal arts damage. You increase attack depending on the number of targets the enemy is blocking. Uh, No wonder. But I actually want- one for this, since arts deal attacks deal arts damage. Hard to believe, but maybe this adds a block one. Guess one thing's never gonna change. Actually, with let me time. check here. Swords will inevitably clash. Oh no, never mind. The uh, their defense is much lower than their resistance. Yes, one thing's never gonna change with time. Yeah, if I'm gonna need that, so I need a lot more healing active. Clash. Because I could bring bagpipe, but that's flare. that's meta. And I even hallucinate if I'm unlucky. <clears throat> Let's make it a blitzkrieg, shall we? Let's establish it. Then leave it written across your face. Not one of you is getting away! Archie is charging. I don't care. Get behind me if you feel yourself slipping! Are the rest, my rats? When tis a choice of life and death, why shouldst thou lay down thy arms? And she is the modern able. A knight, even a virtuous king must from time to time look to the sword. The performance will begin soon, but it seems our audience can't contain themselves. 
Bastard, hä? Ihn fort aus meinem Kopf! Please tell me you're okay. Yeah, that thing has a taunt, so Evan can do that. Crap. The tremble in my music is your honor. Do you have instructions for me? Show me a good spot. Come on, stunt. Get it closer. Get it closer on that tile. There, we got it. Yeah, she, the, yeah, those guys are never gonna get prioritized. Those blood dudes are never gonna be prioritized over the boss. I need Evan's ability up. Luckily, it charges extremely quickly because, uh. You know, he has a ton of arts resistance. Holy crap. I don't like what he's doing there. Down. I guess we'll find out here shortly. A knight, a light. Stronger than a stone. Killing mode enabled. Why do I gotta waste my precious time on the likes of the ego? From the beginning. I have no doubt. They have no position to obey. Well, if no one's going that direction. That's not good. Weirdly, the boss doesn't feel like the most threatening thing in this stage. It's just the sheer number of stuff he spawns. I also should probably have a bit better roll compression because at this point I need three units to keep. I need, uh, yeah, I genuinely need three units to keep Nian alive. That's that's kind of a lot, you know. But it seems the final phase for the Sanguinark is a big problem because uh, he has huge magic resistance, doesn't he? Let me. Uh, does it tell me his stats for phase two? <clears throat> He already has A in his first form. Res, immune to frozen, immune to levitate, immune to sleep, immune to stun, immune to everything relevant. Yeah. <clears throat> this is high, attack speed, blah blah blah. Defeated, this activated, secure. Selecting one target, deals arts damage, all units around, stuns them. Yeah. <clears throat> T 
takes greatly reduced physical and arts and increases HP recovery. Alright, so yeah. <clears throat> this one's actually gonna be a little tricky. Just be this is gonna be a little tricky then, just because, uh... I guess I could move everything up a little. Because I'm pretty sure Valarquin can easily kill his second form because she doesn't deal dam- she, her elemental damage is not based upon how much, uh... Yeah, if I was facing her down, I actually think she might have melted him while he was hanging out there because, uh, well, first of all, he gets massively reduced to- uh, Alright, let's go. <clears throat> Darkon and Sanguine. Alright. I'm pretty- yeah, basically, since he has such high damage reduction, I'm thinking my best bet is to simply overwhelm it. Please stand by. Let's just step. I can read you like an open book. Don't get careless just because I'm here. Targets marked. Don't worry, you can't have any more casualties. You really think you'll get away? <clears throat> the performance will begin soon. But it seems our audience can't contain themselves. Got to stand every expression we make is an opening. Master to pass over as a clarinet. Let's establish a curve. Let's just get this done with. Saga. Well, it's not a big deal here since he doesn't seem to be reviving the blood for whatever reason. He's rather, he's reviving it directly as opposed to the altar doing it. gonna come back pretty soon, unfortunately. I killed him too early thanks to Eben. I need to be careful of that, because I'm pretty confident I just screwed myself there. How am I not supposed? They have no path to escape. Monster Tech. In fault of my cop. They have no path. 
Okay, good. That guy's dead, so I don't have to worry about him. They have no path to escape. Stronger dynamics. Alright, yeah, she can- yeah, Valarqu- Damn you, Valarquin! Don't aim for- aim for the boss! Not the generics! Alright, the Fallout's doing a lot for him, but I can only do so much of this. Stronger than that. My healers is down. Worst part is, that's probably a pretty good if for a spot there. I could really easy. Hello, a little too slow. Oh, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm just struggling on the final boss fight of the chapter. Let me grab a sip of my drink, actually. Hmm. I seem to be figuring out a decent enough strategy, but there's just too many enemies at once. I need to look I should look the boss up on the wiki here. Weirdly enough, it seems like the boss himself is not really the thing I'm worried about. It's mostly the sheer number of enemy he's at the end because I absolutely cannot kill them in time. Mostly I've been using Valarquin and Ebonholes to try and go through it because I've been using the non-meta team. And unfortunately, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should be breaking out the meta units. Well, I've got a bunch of meta units. I got Reed Alter, I got Yado Alter, but that makes this a little too... I'm pretty sure it'd be a little too easy, because I'm pretty sure that those 50 billion will all instantly die if I dropped a single S3 uh, Yado Alter there to cleave them all through. I was hoping to actually try something a little unique here. Her. Yeah, if I just wanted to kill the guys... I've got an M6 Yato Alter here that would absolutely cleave through his 50 billion uh, minions with absolute ease. Likewise, you can see I'm using actually using Protector Defender here. Hence Zerni, but Zerni's uh, just fun. Looks like the upper half doesn't get too much damage, but hmm. I've actually been getting some pretty use out of Paprika, though, thanks to her chain healing abilities, being able to heal well outside of her range. 
I imagine whenever chain healers get their module, it might be a second chain caster where it's going to be really good, but whatever. As you can see, my main choices to kill the boss are Ebon and Velarquin, but that's not been as easy as expected because uh, he has massive uh, resistance and Ebon only deals necrosis damage based on his actual damage dealt. Velarquin has it a bit easier, but she... I can't. T I don't have any abilities to force her to target the boss like I do with Eben, which is mildly frustrating, <laughs> especially since he loves to spawn all those 50 billion uh, creatures. Maybe I should double check what his moves are again. <clears throat> Continuously spawn while you for a period of time. Afterward, Blood Mist will release center around this unit. Mm -hmm. Sunken death. When struck by anti witchcraft, or to root position. I think I'm actually supposed to hit him with the bomb in order to blow him up. I mean, it's gonna suck because it means he's going to activate that, but I think that's what you're supposed to do to kill him. Yeah, like I said, if I wanted, if I used read alter and the auto alter and those other metas, because I actually do have a decent amount. I've been playing since very early in the game's lifespan, so I've got a lot of meta units here. Mountain, Blaze, Surter, Silver Ash. Uh, not so much Defenders. Um, Nia and Cerny are my best ones. The game wants you to hit the boss of the palm. I still think Necrosis is a pretty good way to go about it, although it does suck of how, just how much he does that. I've also got Posy. I didn't realize I finished all stages when I learned this. Ah, uh, really? You killed him without the bomb, then? Yeah, I should have realized because uh, I th when I saw that there was three bomb paths, I thought, okay, what the game probably is gonna want from me is to hit the altar three times with three different bombs in order to detonate it. But no, only one blew it up. So yeah, I'm probably supposed to hit him with a bomb, although to be fair, Valarquin is actually pretty good at damaging the boss since Necrosis damage is functionally true damage right now. At least as far as my understanding, he has absolutely no elemental damage resistance. And Valarquin deals elemental damage based on her attack power and not damage dealt, so she can easily get all the elemental damage needed to actually proc it. Plus the attack shred's nice. I could swap her and Eben's position on the map, I guess. Have Eben fire downward to try and melt the boss while he's, you know, a little distracted. Because I don't want the... I could also leave the boss alive, I guess. But the thing is, the more I kill... The more I kill the boss and have him revive, the more he's gonna stun everyone. And as we've seen in some of my previous runs, they're just gonna do that. They're just gonna run right past my ops while they're all stunned. Because I have to have everyone in a line in order for Paprika to chain heal them. And unfortunately, the problem with being in a line is that they're all going to be adjacent to one another, which of course means kaboom, I'm going to die. So that's a little mildly frustrating, not going to lie there. The boss targets the bomb first and... Might then. Something good to keep in mind, but I also do have some DP problems since I have to deploy a lot of stuff here. I mean, as I mentioned, I need three medics. I need Paprika's Chain, Telopsis, and Palace. And as we saw, Telopsis straight up dies to what everything coming down south. They, uh, she simply can't take the damage. I guess I could try and replace her with someone else, with the uh, Shining or something, who can take hits a little better, but. Those Canyers have been instantly killing Shining even while her S3 is up, which is weird. I thought their cans did Arts damage, since you know Shining only really raises defense, but no, she they do physical, so I guess they're just that strong on Adverse. Yeah, honestly, if it wasn't for his 12 billion stupid uh, blood creatures, I'm pretty confident I have this, but unless I... Right. And while I c an easy solution would be simply 
use the auto alter since she'll probably I'm pretty sure she can take them all out in one s3 swing I was kind of hoping to win without too much without any meta to it and I know that meta is arguable for some like I was asked how does Eben not count as meta I said well he's not the big burst one like Surt or Mianar or, or all those others but Pusher and Ambusher maybe for mass killing trash Actually, yeah, an ambusher could work, especially. But my only issue there is Sanguinark might go after him. I'm also not sure if I have enough healing, because again, it was th required three here. I guess I could replace Paprika with. Uh... Let me check. Where is this? If I were to put Pure Stream, would she... no Pure. I know Pure Stream's limit. One, two, three down. That would not hit. Uh... That would absolutely not hit. Uh... Yeah, so unfortunately, Neon would not get healed by her. It has to be Paprika if I want that. Ambusher is possible, but I'm mostly concerned because I'd have to remove Palace. But I do have an Ambusher. I do have Ethan built. And he is damn good at what he does. Make no mistake. He's absolutely one of those four stars that could e even outshines their uh, six, the, not the six, or the five star counterparts because uh, remember Ascalon's a thing. I'm not sure about Mizuki. Mizuki, to my understanding, is more about something else entirely, so a lot different from Ethan and his focus on crowd control. But I guess since I now know that uh, Sanguinark always goes south, I could make sure I cover there. Then again, even ranged enemies will still target Ethan, so I guess I'll have to be wary of that. I guess there's not much I can really do, though. Yeah, especially since the ideal spot would be right here between the, uh... Within expectations. uh... She's too far back there, unfortunately. I should restart this real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's free, right? Might as well. If luck's, honestly, luck has to be off your side in order for him to fail at his crowd control because he just has such a high one with you maxed out his module. Which I did, mind you. Believe me, as a free-to-play player, I've learned to appreciate a lot of the low, what the low stars can. And Ethan is definitely up there with Pinecone as one of the four stars that easily outshines the five stars. Even ha Arguably has some value oh, even when the... Uh, my headaches flare up. Six. Although he has some lucky. utility even with the six stars existing Let's too, although that's a bit more debatable. The intel that written across your face. Target marked. I don't pick fights I can't win. I'm glad that Saga can heal herself like that. Virtuous king must from time to time look to the sword. <laughs> I am his name, the Jesus, and life and death. Well, that's mildly annoying. I was hoping she'd be a better distraction than that, but I guess that's not the case. And I can't let that leak, now can I? Right. 
stronger than the stone cold as a cabinet. They have no way to do things. Stronger dynamics. Crap, he died a little too early. I gotta hurry and try and get this bomb over there before uh, he respawns, although I don't think that's possible anymore. Yeah, he's coming back extremely soon, and that's not good. Even a virtuous king must from time to time look to the sword. There we are. Go. Go puzzle. You got this. Hey, Sanguinark buddy, I got a present for ya. Definitely W style. Oh, excellent, so that did automatically kill them all. Faster, Everyone hanging in there? Hey, Sanguinark, you wanna go with me? The enemy's weak point is the first haste. This is fine. Damn it, I leaked him. There's an... Worst part is I probably could have stopped him, so I'm dumb. Alright, so the bomb stops him, and I think I guess it just removes his damage reduction a bit, because I did seem like Puzzle was doing a bit more damage than he was prior. Alright, I actually think we might be able to do this without any meta units, but with this strategy, I just need to be very smart about it. And be wary of the final area. Alright, yeah, if the bomb completely moves his damage reduction, we're gonna be in good shape then. Because the whole- as you've noticed, I've been using Eben and Velarquin as my boss killers here. Fifteen seconds. Okay, so basically the same as the cannon on Manfred. Good to know. I must say, Puzzle's definitely been one of the best things I raised uh, prior to the- I'm disappointed I didn't raise him sooner. I get it's because, uh... I get it's because he's an agent and there's not a single bad agent in the entire game right now, but... Still. Healer, come on. Uh, distract. Please be a distraction. Complete. The performance will begin soon, but it seems our audience can't contain themselves. Let's establish a code. Turn the leader to written across your face. Shit. I am in trouble. Stronger than fought us when I'm caught. The intel work began long beforehand. When to the choice they have no way to advance. Here we are. They have no position to evade. Oh, even a virtuous king must from time to time look to the sword. Do you have instructions for me? 
crap, leaked. Oh, no, never mind. There's no way I'm gonna be able to last against this. Yeah, that's no good. I needed to get Cerny or something up there sooner. Actually, even Highmore might have worked, honestly. That was a rough run. But yeah, I think we've got it. Start to finish. There'll always be a few rounds of polish before you land where you want to. A big issue is I have trouble getting DP early on. This is an extremely DP heavy team, unfortunately. Tactical support system. And I refuse to use flag pipe. I do have bag pipe, and I do have the flag bearers, but I prefer someone that can actually fight. Can flag bearers fight? The answer may surprise you. Well, actually, it won't because the answer is no. Not one of you is getting away. Mm, has to put her that far up, even though I probably should. Alright, be a distraction, please. Mm -hmm. Let's just get this done with. Careful of music on the battlefield, especially when you face a Lysania. You can't have any more casualties! I don't pick fights, I can't win. Please deliver my visions to the master. Oh, whoops, uh, that was a little early. Damn it, that's too m one leaked. How? How did one- wait, how did one leak? He's not holding- he's not blocking three foes. Uh, I keep tunnel visioning. Really call this ending good. Are you the one who just got a headache? Not me? No, I've got this here. I just need to do it right. The problem is I mailed, I sent out the thing too early. Evan's new model compared to the previous two. Is it worth the investment? Speaking as someone where Evan is a clear favorite, I will say the new one actually surprised me. I figured it'd be stronger than his X module, the first module, because that one's the one you usually go for in raw attack. But since the Necros is basically true damage, it's a huge dot. I usually actually used his Y module because the char the stored charge for elites or whatever counts, and therefore can have certain maps can give him almost a permanent 30% uh, attack speed or whatever it is, which is really nice, even if though it's not the strongest. That's still a consideration, but I must say I am absolutely impressed with the amount of damage he does with the Necrosis. This, uh, the Necrosis proc has absolutely obliterated enemies that even his X module sometimes had trouble with, and I'm guessing that's because of just how good elemental damage is, since nothing resists it so far. So yeah, I would say his Delta module is easily his best one now, unless you prefer the convenience of Y. 
probing the enemy's weak points post haste. <clears throat> so yeah, I want to hundred percent recommend his uh, new module if you haven't gotten it yet, because it really helps him take out a lot of very frustrating. In fact, even here, you've been seeing me use him and Valar Quinn to melt these guys here. <laughs> yeah, I was using Y too. I was genuinely, I was genuinely thinking, eh, I usually use Y for convenience rather than strength, so I'll probably still prefer it. But it did, in fact, impress me quite a bit. So yeah. So this is, at least this is one Eben fan who's definitely all for the new module. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna risk putting her here. It's a little dangerous, but she can heal Ethan now if needed. <clears throat> gonna need a distraction. <clears throat> When tis a choice of life and death, why shouldst thou lay down thy arms? The intently expression you make is an opening. Oh, even a virtuous king must from time to time look to the sword. The intel work began long before. Careful of music, especially when you face a lysine. You tremble in my music. Is your honor, Master Temple? Ethan. Oh, yeah, these guys have no arts resistance whatsoever, do they? Initiation. Progress activated arts unit. These whip guys, I swear, they're the biggest pain in the rear. A knight, even a virtuous king, must from time to time look to the sword. It's fine. Mm -mm. You really think you'll get away? Stronger dynamics. Faster tempo. Oh balls, that's not good. Stronger dynamics. Oh dear. Is everyone hanging in there? In thought aus meinem Kopf. Shall I shut up or else? Damn it! Ugh. That stupid whip guy. We should go. Before the next wave has us thrown. I thought I had it, but evidently this need everything needs to go absolutely flawlessly. And even then, there might be something that I've missed, because I know there's like a, still a huge amount of cannoneers left to do after this, and that's not going to be fun. Since, especially since, as mentioned, whenever they put their cannons on an enemy, it just melts them. Even if it's someone like Nian, and I had Shining's S2 up, she just got melted almost instantly. I don't know what the cause is. I thought maybe it dealt art damage, which case I can't do anything without using Nightingale. But no, I don't know what it is. I guess I can only assume a verse is just that much stronger. Let's just stop and leave it written across your face. Mm -mm. Target marked. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The 
distraction. I'm a distraction. If I had Taylor's skill there, it would have been fine, but we had this new skill earlier because the guy passed behind her. Yeah, I really can't stand how Taylor's skill is 100 SP. I get they're trying to compensate the fact that she has an accelerated SP growth for the party while active, but... I just don't think it's enough if we're blunt. The performance will begin soon, but it seems our audience can't contain themselves. Yeah, it's no good. I'll never get, stop that thing in time. Uh, she has absolutely... When tis a choice of life and death, why shouldst thou lay down thy arms? deliver my vision. Stronger dynamics. Gravel can't 1v1 the slug. That does seem to be the case, yes. I'm just lucky I had, a uh, April. I was a, well, a very strange person who decided to do a Rabbit Knights, uh, theme team. Which isn't gonna work for a number of reasons, but... We can get back to that later. So I have all rabbits raised, basically. And yeah, that doesn't mean I'm looking forward to the ones coming up soon. Mildly annoying that he go choose Puzzle of all people, but whatever. Alright, the slugs are a free heal to those guys. Full heal, pretty much, which is mildly annoying. Okay, good, he's dead. That should make life a bit easier. I'd appreciate the gravel deals multiple hits like that. That makes this significantly faster. Stronger dynamics, as startling as a triton. They have no power to withstand. I am here again. There we are. Everyone, go get him. April, I know you're good for this, so do it. <laughs> oh my, so I only have one bomb left each, huh? There we go, he's down. Oh, 
Oh shoot! Oh shoot, 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 no! <sighs> no, not even close. We can hardly call this ending good. You have just a second to get the buff the dying the launch before the boss kills it. Not me. I shouldn't need more than two or three though. It's just my Apparently my damage just isn't enough. He's pretty tanky. There's a few things I could do to try and help with this. Instead of Velarquin, I could replace her with a more meta unit like uh, Pozyompka, who would absolutely tear through some of these. But actually, does she have the range for this? No, not the enemy list, this one. The leak was the st Yeah, unfortunately I don't think there's anything I can do about the stun. Uh, Posy can hit the middle there, but her, she, there's, an ver there's no point where she can, unless I replace Valarkin with her completely, there's only one spot where she can attack the boss the same po time her, uh, is there. It's a bit tricky, I guess. As nice as uh, she is, uh, can I trust Eben to get? No, he's n well. Maybe I could use uh, Pawsey, who has a lot of more burst damage, and therefore might be able to capitalize on this a lot bet on the stun a lot better, because her S3 combined with her uh, typewriter focusing on the same target should deal some pretty high damage. But the problem is she's meta, of course. Eben's probably my least meta nuker available. I could probably use someone like Ifrit and try and melt him with Res Shred, but again, that's that's heavily meta. <clears throat> Fire Whistle's not gonna do anything to help here. I'm not, I'm not even pretend that's gonna count. Thorns is a maybe. It kind of depends, honestly. Actually, maybe I could use him instead of Zerny if we're completely honest, but I'd have to aim him downwards, I guess. If I wanted to fire that, but again, he's Thorns is meta, even if he's, uh, well, people are speculating he's very soon to be power crept. S2 waiting in the back and mines insurance. Uh, W is meta, isn't she? I haven't mastered her S2 yet either, but I guess it's possible. Since I'm not for going for meta units, it's a bit tricky because they're either, the only six stars I can really use are either... Archetypes that are good, but outclassed, like Pioneers for Saga, or Protector for Neon, or ones that nobody cares about or don't really give the respect they deserve. Like, if we ever get a... S Honestly, if we ever get a six-star Arts Defender, I'm not sure if they'd be uh, or <laughs> considered good or not. Uh, hey. Mostly, I think I'm mostly lacking in the burst to, to take it to capitalize on the boss's downtime. I could use S2 Yato Alter, but if I'm going meta, because that absolutely will tear him to ribbons. Compa I do not have Texas Alter, but I have Yato Alter, and compare the two, Yato Alter will absolutely. Yato Alter kind of sacrifices AoE and crowd control in exchange for significantly higher focus damage, so that's absolutely ideal for burst windows. I have, imagine it'll be easy for Thorns to build up momentum here. They design a 6-star Arts Defender, it'll just become a 3 block guard, a bit tankier than most guards. I'm wondering about that. I'm also kind of surprised that Arts Guards never got their uh, module, even though several archetypes that debuted after them have since gotten their archetype. Hmm... I guess if I'm truly going to be going meta... I guess you could- one could argue Thorns has fallen off, but I'd say that's less that Thorns has fallen and more that the chapters have largely been designed in a way to prevent him from getting his uh, full potential. Because like during chapter 11, enemies were sparse but stronger, so it was hard for him to get full charges. 
and the previous chapter was more about the finding the uh, spies hidden among the civilians. So his not he's not daily here, but he might be able to make a comeback here, I guess. I don't want to get rid of April because she's genuinely good in all sorts of situations. Dorothy Mines? I wish I had Dorothy. I do have Frost, but Frost isn't going to cut it here. I actually have the entire Rainbow Six crew, for the record. Unfortunately, he's immune to stun. Well, actually, even if he's immune to stun, I could just use uh, Ash Test 2 for high burst damage, but no. Alright, we'll try Thorns here this time. If it fails again, I'll whip out the emergency uh, nuke button. It's gonna suck, but... Direct memory access for application map. An enemy coordinates authorized. Kind of funny, though. It feels like Sanguinark isn't nearly as threatening as a lot of the other stuff here, like those uh, whip guys, because... Actually, it's largely... Well, the stun is certainly not helping matters. It's definitely the whip that's causing me the biggest trouble here. Let's establish a thing you leave it written across your face. I'm also glad I built Paprika. I know Papri people are right when they say Paprika is generally replaceable by uh, AoE healers like Tlopsis here. And they are correct, but this is definitely one of those few situations where she's actually worth while. <laughs> Uh, distraction. Let's just get this done with. All right, that's fine. The distraction has worked. <clears throat> the end of every expression we make is an opening. Program initiating healing process. Thorns time. Eben. Careful of music on the battlefield, especially when you face a Lysanian. He's functionally doing what I was using Ethan for, and that's why I decided to do that particular option. As Dorothy, as a clarinet. Stronger dynamics. Oh dear. Alright, that's way too many. Yeah, get this one out here. Thorns isn't ideal, but he sh actually ha has a much better damage output than Saga, so I think this will work. It's no good. I can't keep Nian alive. I've lost. Yeah, I messed up by not keeping Nian alive there. Sorry. Did I mess up again? Uh, damn it. Eben's voice lines are mining. He's from the. Uh, lasagna is Italy. He's German, actually. Isn't Let's see here. Origin. Now I'm curious. Um, quick Google checks insists that lasagna originated in Naples, Italy. Oh, Lithuania is Germany. Oh, yeah, that's what you mean. <laughs> Uh. 
I think the I could replace Paprika with a single target medic like Shining, but I really think AoE is absolutely key here. I could grab Dorothy from support, but the problem with that is I don't have enough DP generation. I just don't have enough DP generation to keep up with all of the Dorothy traps. As we've seen, I'm extremely tight until the entire team is out, which is mildly frustrating, I won't lie. Hmm, perhaps I should have uh, Saga start behind from the spot I need to put there and just have her continue to generate DP the whole time. <clears throat> Saga's definitely a favorite, that's for sure, but... Do you need me to tell you all? You seem like a pack of children at a holiday camp. The if I can read you like an open book. Not one of you is getting away. I do appreciate the saga can self-heal, so I don't have to be babysitting sitting her all the time. Target marked. A knight? I'm sure I gotta waste my precious time on the likes of you third-rate amateurs. In fort aus meinem Kopf. Any orders for me? Please deliver my wishes to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's no good. Without three healers or something, I can't do it. If Warfare were to be able to replace Paprika, give a lot of SP and location. Mm, the problem is there's a lot of damage coming out in a very short period of time. So I'm concerned it might not be enough. But I guess if I replaced her with someone s just straight up stronger, like... If I place Telopsis with uh, Shining me and to the battlefield, are we not? Yeah, this might help. New data used to assemble package build. Warfarin is quite strong. Yeah, but I haven't mastered it. If we're blunt, it's a percentage-based heal, one of the very few in the game. But unfortunately, I don't actually have that many medics raised. I was actually considering Lumen entirely for that reason. Well, that and he's one of the very few male medics around. That, and he can actually heal in, in heavy damage situations like that. I know Harold Barry is coming up later, but he's a wandering medic, so he's not going to have very strong actual healing power. Lumen will. That's another reason I raised Puzzle. Well, he's apparently my only male vanguard that's over uh, four stars. Oh, I guess there's also uh, Vigil, but I need Vigil. I Vigil's very expensive, honestly. Well, I know people who like him swear by him, it's, uh, well, I guess we can see. At the end of the day, we need all these heal- a lot of healing and a lot of damage output, and I seem to be lacking both. Lumen is kinda meta. I actually would disagree there. While Lumen is good at healing, that's literally all he's good at. And as a reminder, 
A healer who's good at raw healing is generally a criticism. See Paprika, genuinely one of the stronger AoE healers around, but that's also all she has. While, say, Tolo Tlopsis here has healing and also SP gain on top of that. Uh, Perfumer has AoE healing and the passive global heal that can even help juggernauts and uh, reapers and such. So, I think people are just nicer to Lumen because he's a welfare 6 star, and those usually have lower standards. Granted, that's not my first spicy take. Here's a one that's probably going to piss people off. I actually don't think Glaudia is that amazing if you're not using her in an Abyssal Hunter team. Sure, she works fine as a puller, but I mean, there's 12 billion pullers. <laughs> Not to say Gladia is bad, but quite the opposite. As I said, she's absolutely absurd in the corresponding team. Yeah, if I could use Nightingale, that would probably fix a lot of this problem easily. Got to keep a distraction here. Glide is great, but like I said, if you have the Abyssal Hunter team bonus, this like even just uh, Scotty and I'd say Luminous Sweet Card to replace, and I appreciate the negative stats removal blast for. I haven't had too much trouble with the healing in IS4. Rather, the big issue I have in IS4 is killing the boss past its massive damage reduction in phase two. But I've noticed that I pretty much have to rely on either Valar Quinn or Ebon Holes or Necrosis damage in general to bypass it. Although I guess that's probably by design, you know, make the freebie look good in their own thing. There we go, now both healers are directly able to heal Nian, and I think that'll help. Unfortunately, there's a lot of arts going down here. Unfortunately, Nightingale, there's no argument. Well, we could argue whether or not Lumen is meta, there is no argument that... Uh, Nightingale is meta, especially since until Baseline gets here, there's no one else who can grant to teammates uh, res like that. You really think you'll get away? A knight, a life. Even a virtuous king must from time to time look to the sword. Please deliver my vision to the knight. Uh, Evan, please do us a solid and completely ignore that guy in favor of the payload. Come on, you. You respawn at the worst possible time, damn it. Oh, what am I saying? I can do this. Oh, damn it. They destroyed it. I, I think it's over. I genuinely don't think I can get it back in time anymore. Yeah, it's not possible. I need to redo this. There's no possible way I'll do it before the whip guy kills everyone. Please, don't be disheartened. Not every composition is smooth. From start to finish. I know I gave up a little Hello, early there, but at the same time, if before you land, the you want. Sanguine Arc isn't defeated or I don't take out, then that whip guy is just going to kill everyone. It's just not going to work. Low-key survive the big guy without skill, a good finding. Yeah, Tilo's a really good healer.
There's a reason she's one of the few five stars that actually is liked. Well, Smith's gotta be ready to pay the debts accrued by the weapons she forges. <clears throat> I do like the music, but then again, this game has really good music in the general sense. The intel. I can read you like an open book. It is but a flash in the drift of time. Archimit Chowdhury. Mm. Sanguinark needs a distraction, so let's give him one. Unfortunately, the other guy also thinks it's gonna be fun to attack, so that's uh, that's gonna be fun. And I mean that in my Pathfinder DM's version of fun. I will have him use his ability here, and then we'll end it here. I can't stall for too long, but I also... This, uh, I don't mind if she attacks him. Initiation, given mode enabled. Come on, destroy that. Not ideal, but uh, he's got the damage that can handle that. Shall I open? Be ready at a moment's notice with the intel I send back. They have no power to withstand. Let's establish it. Show me a good start. Oh, you want me to think? You dare strike my shield with your spear? That's gonna end with you in pieces. Or is that not prompt? They have no path to escape. The lightning pairs chaos. Any orders for me? They have 
have no power to withstand. Stronger than I am. fought aus meinem Kopf. It's no good. <clears throat> Sheesh, I've been at this for hour and a half. Hour and a half. Because the cutscenes and stuff all took a little under half an hour, and wow. Yeah, if I use Shining instead of Telopsis, I'm pretty confident I absolutely could do this, but Bomb Lane has no AoE. Maybe? I did try using Hymor and La Pluma there before, but unfortunately they die way, way too quickly. They... Yeah, I need someone who can actually be healed. I did try... I tried Savage, who's my best AoE. He's Centurion, that's not six stars, and uh, you could probably guess how that went. I have a lot of units built, they're just not meta. Well, I have a lot of meta units built too, but... Yeah, I could easily bring out, like, Surter's S3 or Yadda Walter if I just wanted him dead, but... It seems like I'm not actually even any close. I guess that's the biggest issue, I'm not even close. I don't think I have Spectre, or if I do, I don't- I haven't raised her. I want to remember why- I was trying to remember why I raised Savage, and oh yeah. Savage is pretty much the best lane holder Rabbit Knights has, and I say that with every implication that comes with. Let me grab a sip of my drink. You know, back in Chapter 12, I didn't even beat Damas T, even with my you know, full team of meta units. <clears throat> Weedy S2 can push. I do not have Weedy, unfortunately. Actually, what support? What pushes do I have? Um. <clears throat> all right, so basically, everyone from Rope and Gladia onwards. I was going to get Gladia's module, but then I remembered she's a six star, and that's expensive as hell when I don't have the other Abyssal Hunters. So that's out of the question. I do like awking things, but that's not going to cut, unfortunately. I actually did use, um, I can't use Lin, but I was able to use Mint to really good effect in this whole chapter. Basically, any chapter where there's a ranged tile in the middle of Phalanx Cluster can hit damn near everything, so that was pretty neat with just watching all those enemies melt. But unfortunately, that's not going to work here. She's straight up not strong enough, I can tell you that right now. N even, no matter what I do, she's not going to deal enough damage. Lee's S3 might work, we have DP issues. Unfortunately, I don't have Lee. And not for lack of trying, I have pulled on every damn banner that came. So at this point, I'm just gonna buy him from the shop and drag him to my... He wrote into my uh, land ship, kicking and screaming if I have to. Especially frustrating. I actually end up getting Ling. I don't like summoners. But you know, I'm in... Figured no reason not to raise her, right? But yeah, I never use her because I'm not a fan of summoners, by and large. Notice I keep forgetting to get his module. That's not me b thinking it's not worth it. That's me being straight up uh, lazy or <laughs> neglectful. So, <laughs> feel free to get mad at me for that. Nine colored deer was for a collab nights clear. <laughs> Surprisingly, she actually does pretty good burst healing. But I'm gonna tell you a real. I'm gonna be real with you right now. Quarkus right next to her does everything she does and better. <laughs> so, yeah. If I could have Amia hold the top lane, that would be quite nice, but there's too many enemies. I need true AoE. 
Like, I could probably use Blaze to good effect, but she's meta. Mountain, I could probably use him to good effect, but again, meta. I end up using him during the uh, chapter 5 or whatever with the last one with the cannon before the tutorial. But I was able to optimize him out later. It turns out Hummus can survive the cannon if his, he has full, full uh, shields. I genuinely didn't know that. Although I will be honest and say, uh, you know, this stage I did act, in fact have to break my no meta rule because I needed Silver Ash. Totter simply couldn't kill the invisible enemies fast and enough, and they, as mentioned, they were somehow melting my units. It's a, even when Shining had her S3 up, they were just getting dogpiled, so yeah, I had to break it already with Silver Ash. And yes, I will say Silver Ash is meta despite people saying Mayanar power crept him. Mayanar is stronger, but he's the one you deploy and leave there. Silver Ash has always been a hella drop, and he's still good at being a hella drop. Did I not just show you? Yeah, I've got Lin and Mint. However, Lin is technically meta, I think. Well, that and her ability is not permanent. Well, actually... Well, it, it, she can clear that, but that doesn't change that I don't have someone who can kill Sanguinark in the burst situation there. And that's kind of the main issue I have, if we're honest. I was Ebonholz and uh, Valarquin were pretty good at melting elites so far, but they just can't seem to kill Sanguinark even when his shield is down. <clears throat> and believe me, I have the meta nukers. Leave it to me, Doctor. Give enough heals, you can just stall Sanguinark. Doesn't he summon the 50 billion? Doesn't he continuously summon the 50 billion things, though? That's kind of a problem. I do have enough heals, I'm pretty confident, but... An enemy coordinates authorized. Please stand by. Yeah, as much as I did... While Ethan was helping at the bottom, we did find out quickly that I lost the top. So I probably do need some, like, thorns there. I don't mind Phalanx casters being up and having their up and down like that, but the biggest issue ultimately is killing Sanguinark when he does so that he doesn't constantly summon the 12 billion blood slug creatures. <clears throat> the intel work began long. Let's just I can read you like an open book. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Right, I could even do this. She doesn't last nearly as long, but I guess she doesn't have to last that long for the job here. <clears throat> Initiation complete. Program initializing. Let's just get this done with. Yeah, there's a reason I said the moment I use Yato Alter, it's gonna be easy. Do not even have to block those up? Just have Ethan kill them. Hmm. I guess I could try that too, yeah. It's just a matter of whether Ethan can kill them or not. But that... The only thing is I can't lose the top lane too much. The reason I have Thorns up here in general is because if I don't... I have Caserni or someone with a good block, they're going to leak. Let's establish it. Yeah, full of music on the better Especially when you play Salai-san. I have
engaging. As long as those guys don't revive, we should be able to do this. Alright, Sanguinark is out, so I should be able to do this. Alright, good, the explosion's gone. Let's get some more DP then, shall we? Potentially do something with this. Stronger the best Eben, please ignore that if you please. So that's our target. Oh, that's not enough damage, is it? Oh dear, that's not good at all. Oh, this is not good. Ah, it goes back if there's no bomb there. Oh, so it's not ideal. Oh, balls, that's not good. Extraordinary melodies can only be played by the initiating process. However, I do notice the Sanguinark does not uh attack my ranged ops, so that is something to be notable, to be noted. Crap, how am I supposed to deal with that? A night I'm still about to waste my precious time on the likes of you third rate. Amateurs. Right, each death causes that guy to become stronger. It's no good. Yeah, it's no good. Please. Do not stand before me. No. Just allow me to take a moment of rest by myself. You can six get six bombs from three launchers. Yeah, I tried to click it again to fire another, but it was still charging by the time he destroyed it. So I'm not sure what I could do there. Yeah, Thorns just doesn't have enough AoE up there, but I also can't just leave him there because, well, he gets overwhelmed. I also tried putting Highmore up in the top there, but she just gets killed almost instantly. It's straight up not going to work, unfortunately. Yeah, there's too many targets for Thorns. He's not going to work. <laughs> well, I guess if I want, really got pissed off, I could use his Surter to clean them all out. Or Silver Ash, for that matter. Neither has true AoE, but the dit raw damage they do should, would be enough. I need the previous bomb to be void slightly earlier, so I have enough SP for a second bomb. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I need true AoE here, but the Reapers just don't have enough self-sustain without healing, outside healing. But I have noticed that Sanguine Arc doesn't seem to have a range attack on his uh, second phase. <clears throat> I could also go with Ifrit and turn that into an Ifrit lane, but... Actually, maybe that's not a bad idea at all. I mean, I'm already using meta. And, uh, let's see here. Yeah, she shreds their defense and... His range attack was focused on the bombs. Ah. Well, that's good for me, I guess. Ifrit does, in fact, have true AoE. I could use someone like Leonhart, but he's not gonna be good, I don't think. Good in time, I don't think. The only thing is, can I get Ifrit out early? Because she is hands down one of my most expensive operators. I don't have any potentials for her, so she's just purely 33. But I guess I'm already using, if I'm already using meta. Still, her defense and, a, and res shred is going to be absolutely essential. <clears throat> War. Alright, let's see if I can do this. I hear the sound of the flooding tide. I was gonna say, I put, think I put that in the wrong place, but no. Let's just stop every expression you make is an opening. So that's our target? Is that all you've got? Our team is charging. Let's just get this done with. Let's just snap. Can you leave it written across your face? Let's establish a code. Actually, I think I got the position wrong. We should go before the next wave has us drowned. Yeah, well, the reason I put her there was to heal Ethan, who also has true AoE, but if it is hands down stronger. I guess if I'm gonna be struggling with burst dam struggling with raw damage. A smith's gotta be ready to pay the debts accrued by the weapon she forges. I have to do it this way. <clears throat> the end. I can read you like an open book. It is but a flash in the drift of time. There we go. And I can put Ifrit right here next to Telopsis. Let's begin. Grief ever echoes in our souls. That's our target. Finally, it's no use. When tis a choice of life and death. The expression you make is an opening. The performance will begin soon, but it seems our audience can't contain themselves. Alright, now I gotta get ready. Alright, different time. I'll try to do it this way now that she's blocked. A knight, even a virtuous king, must from time to time look to the sword. They have no power to withstand. Have 
They have no path to escape. Let's establish every expression you make is an opening. I'm getting some more DP out of this. Good. They have no way to advance. Be ready at a moment's notice for the info I sent back. They have no power to withstand. The intel work began long beforehand. A nice blue body burns at over 1,400 degrees. They have no power to withstand. See that's our target? Am I up? Stronger than a stone as a clarinet. They have no path to escape. Three of them. Shit. They have no power to there we are. No leak. Extraordinary melt. They have no power to withstand. As startling as a trifle. Damn it, he's gonna kill Ifrit. Okay, good. He's not. No, not the stun. They have no way to advance. The end of every expression you make is an opening. Faster, tempest startling as a trifle. They have no path to escape. No one left here. They have no path to escape. The intel work began long before the temple. They have no power to withstand. Please deliver my visions to the master. The intel can leave it written across your face. Crap. No good. Uh. 
fatal error occurred during the operation. Reboot the system to proceed. There's a lot of arts damage going in, so we guess we have no choice. You held on to your Tilo skill. Ah, damn it, yeah, I did. I don't know why I was doing that. Then again, I was clearly running out of enemies on the bottom half there. Because this big thing is that the stun knocked everyone out of Ifrit's attack range, and if Ifrit can't hit them, her damage is not of much help. So, I guess I need someone else. Pastor doesn't have true AoE. Leonhar has true AoE, but there's no way in hell he's gonna have enough damage to do this job. Aya probably could, but I don't like Aya. Kyobi is amazing, but a single target. That's not gonna help here. thing is, I think we actually still need Ifrit, because at the end of the day, that's Res Shred, and that's irreplaceable, to be blunt. However, we didn't, we, you did know it was all what I do, right? Highmore was able to handle the top after the uh, phase change. Granted, it did have Eben helping with his necrosis, but... It does mean we might not have to worry as much about the top. Alright, let's go. If I don't hold on to Tilo's skill, I might be able to survive. Think the, like I said, the big issue here was... Largely... I've finished tuning. <clears throat> I may perform now. Let's establish every look you take has value. It is but a flash in the drift of time. Our teammate charging. When tis a choice of life and death. I seem to underestimate Tillo's survival. Well, never mind then. At what point am I going to get pissed off? Right now. Is this the rendezvous point? I'm going to prove this to you wrong. Sure seemed that way. <laughs> if I really want to make the top lane a bit better, I know someone on my list has Executor Altar. Odor might not be half bad either, if we're honest, but... Alright, who has Exe Altar? Uh, that's a support one. He does have full module, however. Hmm. I'll see how it goes with Highmore up there. And don't ask why I like Highmore more than, uh... Oh, nice. I might have to add you then. Um, but first, uh, we'll see how things go here. For me, I have Stainless, Auk, and the general supports up on. Well, right now I have Eben. Makes my headaches well, right now I have Eben, because some friends wanted to see, try out the new budget. module, his new module Let's for themselves. Bit, shall we? Curbing the enemy's weak point. I have no intention of setting my eye on you. Uh, I am through screwing around with this bastard. 
I will slowly start adding these six stars. And I do know that Nightingale will should be able to survive those guys coming down south as well. Hmm. Oh, this is not the right position. Whoops. Right, I have to put her to the side because I need Ifrit there. Terrible. If I really let myself loose, things would get a whole lot nastier for everyone involved. Yeah, I think I can do it with this team in particular. Especially since I'm being cheap and using Kieran. <laughs> Kieran Yato. Alright. Yeah, the fact I'm whipping out it's uh The fact I have both shining by yeah. the way, I will say this chapter sure had a lot of shining and night and get <gasps> whole shipping material, that's for sure. Expectations. But yeah, I'm using these two this couple, power couple. No balance is already a win. Let's just stop the lead that you written across your face. Hmm. Flourish? Perish. No read arts, no server, no no ballot. This is already a win. I guess that is true. I'm not using the uh, absolute top tier ones. Funny thing, I actually went after read altar because I wanted harmony, <laughs> but she never came home. The s the smug cat uh, completely eluded me, unfortunately. Oh yeah, look at that. She's barely taking. She's taking significantly less damage. I don't even need a bait unit. And of course, she gives allies res, so Neon is gonna take those hits like a champ. Honestly, the way I determine, because of how much everyone always says a six star is a must pull, I, oh, well, aside from my obvious uh, rabbit at Knight's team, which by the way is not an art, is really not a valid team yet. They're missing a healer that's not three stars and an actual van and a tank. A vanguard would be nice too, but of course not necessary. But if it's not that, then uh, well, I are they borrowed for Kyosin guides? Because Texas Altar is not borrowed as often as you might think. Uncle Mianar, he actually is taking quite a bit, so I'm definitely gonna have to keep an eye out for him when he hits the shop, but yeah. The performance will begin soon, but it seems our audience can't contain themselves. Oh crap, that's bad, I leaked. I forgot I have to have that lane up there covered by uh, someone other than uh, Saga. She can't do it on her own. She has more than enough power to handle the blood guys, though, so if I need to plug a hole, she does work since uh, she's pretty good at... She can 1v1 them, but she can't hold more than two, unfortunately. I think I mentioned earlier, but I'm a fan of the pioneers and agents because I prefer vanguards who can actually fight. I'm not a fan of flag bearers because they can't fight. Prolonged casting makes my headaches flare up, and I even hallucinate if I'm unlucky. <coughs> Let's make it a blitzkrieg, shall we? Let's establish firm leave that you're written across your face. Flourish or perish. This is the battlefield. <laughs> Yeah, the fact he's spawning as much as he damn well pleases is mildly annoying. Target. I can see it. No use. 
find me, am I up? I should get rid of these guys. The intel work began long beforehand. I think I might have damaged him a little too much. He's gonna come back soon. Yeah, I shouldn't have used the auto alto there. He died too quickly. I guess I can do it, kill him again once he spawns, but. Alright, there we are. They have no position to evade. Stronger than that. As startling as a triton. They have no position to evade. Oh, I still gotta waste my precious time. There we are. There we are. Fired out another one. The 
is that the target? They have no power to withstand. The Extraordinary melodies cannot... They have no path to escape. I might be able to stall him out now. Yeah, it looks like Highmore was really able to handle that top lane all by herself. Dang. Who will you choose? I should protect you. They have no path to escape. Shall I silence the fort? The interplanary that you've written across your face. Past the best startling as a tritone. Let's establish a curve. I had best have someone here for us. I'm gonna have to go full, uh... We'll use the winnable. It is as long as I'm careful. Good. The the good news is the uh, yeah. The good news is the tr the elemental damage is gonna bypass everything. I've real. I must say I've really gotten to love the elemental damage ever since Valarquin. Here we go. Oh no, this one first should have been first. Darn it. Not ideal, but I can do this. Got a good, lots of good true. Zerny's S2 is true AOE when it goes off. And I can't remove. I'd like to move Shining closer here, but that's not an option, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, Ifrit removing those off the face of the earth is really what's carrying me. And of course, Nightingale. I'm pretty sure Nightingale is the reason this is working, because otherwise, I'm pretty sure this would never work. That red shred is absolutely no joke. Elemental Dow's dying without bombs. Take that level designer. Yeah. To my understanding, even in the home server, they don't have anyone with elemental resistance yet, so that's good. It's gonna enjoy supremacy a little while longer, at least. Yeah, Ifrit's Red Shred is absolutely amazing. It's helping Eben a huge amount, especially since Eben deals Necrosis based on damage dealt, not um, attack power like Valarquin here, which is a small but very important difference. They have no path to All right, with all right, good. Yeah, with uh, Nightingale skill up, nobody's dying. Look at this. Eben has one holy. 
<laughs> oh wow, Eben! No, Eben. Cerny is completely immune. To Remember, Res is percentage reduction, not a flat uh, attack minus defense like a t defense. There, Res is a percentage. So right now, Cerny has 100% arts resistance. <laughs> Take that, Vampire King! <laughs> it literally can't hurt Cerny. <laughs> well, with arts anyway, he can still deal physical. Plus the minimal damage required by the uh, design, but yeah, that's hilarious. I thought it, I seriously thought it capped at 90%. <laughs> Evidently not, while well, Nightingale's involved. Damage reduction may be a pain in the ass, but it's nothing we can't handle this point. Deal arts damage, please, Zerny. Oh, excellent, he got hit by the Necrosis proc. I think that's gonna kill him. Yep! We did it! I unfortunately had to use a handful of meta units, but... Well, like I said, I could have done a lot worse if I wanted. Plus, you could argue it's thematic <laughs> to have Shining and Nightingale working together like that. The power couple, <laughs> as this chapter proves. Ah, the blood rain falls incessantly, as if it will never stop. Logos and Amiya's shoulders have been soaked b red by the rain. The white-haired vampire, however, seems to stroll casually, completely spotless. Ah, another chapter where we beat the boss and then it acts like oh, we never did. I could get with Steam Knight since canonically we don't fight him, but it did suck that Logos and our hard work to get rid of Damazy Cluster turned out to be for absolutely nothing. I'm gonna be honest there, that sucked. Seeing him just appear right there first section, like nothing happened. Which is a shame, because I thought it was actually pretty cool how Logos figured out how to beat him. I mean, Logos uh, confront the Sanguinarch, who enraged the increasing weakness of those chosen, decides to abandon it beyond after a challenging battle. Look at the starry state of yourselves. Lost in confusion, losing sight of what matters. Even if one answers your cri no one answers your cries, you can't waste the stage you've been given. Don't waste your chance at a grand farewell. I state it, therefore it is prescribed. The wind and rain cease, deprived of the right to flow. Yeah, I actually did- yeah, like I said, I was actually- really thought it was creative how Logos managed to defeat them in the end, which is why I was also very disappointed when they just came back as if nothing happened after. That sucked. I do get not all bosses are going to die after we defeat them, but I was kind of hoping it would at least, uh, cause a problem. Wind and rain cease, deprived the right to flow. The moment the words are spoken, the blood rain freezes in midair, like the curtains- like stars. It refracts the, sorrow of the, refracts the sorrow of the sea, the brilliance of the moons, the sanguine arch squints, seemingly unsurprised by the incantation. Rather, it's as if he's appreciating a piece of art drawn between heaven and earth. <clears throat> You've halted the surging. Impressive. Blood pauses at your command. But I am as its master. I am as ma its master. Suspended beads suddenly burst, splattering anything they can reach. The knell will will decay. The order will wear. No? If you so disdain your noble blood, I might as well extract it and return it to your mother, Banshee. She will play for you a mournful whistle. Amia. The vampire only gives Amia a moment opportunity, but it's more than enough. Her palm presses against the vampire's body, sticky blood burning her palm. Is this your blood? Heated by the arts, heated by your talent, but the hot blood I've seen has all been for the sake of resistance and the sake of life. And those people, their blood is much hotter than yours. Referring to Tallulah, I'd wager. Black lines burst from her palm, piercing through the vampire's body. Ugh. Amia, fall back. You didn't get his vitals. Oh, how gold, King of Sarkaz, a monarch of such a little grace you are. Sanguine Ark of Vampires, Prince of Crimson Court. Oh, hey, Ellie. Welcome to the stream. Uh, hey, those are my ribbons. Alright, your offspring fill every battlefield the Sarkaz touch. Your proclaim them 
that slaughter and you proclaim to them that slaughter and conquest are ancient traditions of the vampires. You've shaped your court to what it is today. You've made the people see all vampires nothing more than twisted creatures of desire like yourself. But the vampires I know are not like you. They haven't gone mad. They've only managed to conceal their desires, conditioned too deeply by this age in which they have no home. Have the outfit. Yeah, I agree. Amia really needs that outfit as a skin. I'd love it. Some choose to bow to the invaders, and I pity them. No, that's not it. How do you interpret the blood that your court stands for? The suffering of the sarcasm needs no elucidation. Now, that's a $5 word I've actually seen here and there. Yeah, a story skin should absolutely be... Like, if I got one, for that skin for beating Sanguinark here, that would actually feel earned and worthwhile. <laughs> I will also say that Reed Alter is pretty much the entire reason I've won any of my IS-4 rounds, because dang, she's amazing. I guess if I had kept to losing, I might have eventually added her here, but I'm glad I was able to do so without her. For a point. Especially after... Hey, whoa, don't cut those... Who is them? They may look like they're made of, uh, they may look like accessories, but they are actually made out of flesh. <laughs> All sarcas, even those who submit for you, inevitably know the taste of blood. Overturned in dark alleys, intercepted in dark forests, sometimes a throat is cut, sometimes a cold dagger is thrust between the ribs. It awakens the siblings, who now know the cost of submission. They come to rebel until they too are covered in the blood of their enemies. You don't have to choose violence. <laughs> oh, wait till my new animated emote gets done. <laughs> how pitiful. Kill or be killed. This is the cycle of blood that sarcasts carry. Is that how you define the meaning of blood? A cycle? The first time any of us felt blood on our skin, wasn't it when we were born from our mothers? Blood's the foundation of life. Heritage passed down on umbilical cords. Inevitable stumbles when exploring and wounds will surely heal. You only see it as a synonym for torment death. That is true. Blood has a purpose beyond, you know, war. Secretly seaborne, those ribbons are tentacles in disguise. I mean, uh, an, a legally distinct fey creature would of course have a few things that might seem a bit odd. <laughs> Just make sure not to make any contracts with me. <laughs> Unless you want to. It totally can't end badly for you. <gasps> Your obsession makes you bloodthirsty. You, with all your arrogance and pride, lead them to believe that this is the path the Sarkas should take, the things they do. I reject you, Sanguinark. I reject your actions, your word, and your court. Ha <laughs> what is this I'm hearing? You, an outblood, reject me. A mere crown has inflated you to what? King of Sarkas? Ooh, now that's a good, that's a good drawing. <laughs> The blood churns, wave covers the moons, the crimson removes all colors. I don't care what I am or what I'm called, I only know what I need to do. The prince stops moving a moment, a voice echoes in his mind. Is this how you manipulate the king's power? Oh. Please share some profound words, this shake with me a shallow emotion. You're welcome to try. Shake? No, this is a rejection. The rolling, the wave slows together. The moon towards the moonlight. Indeed. I reject you. I reject you. The way you reduce the king, the sarcasm, Castell, just concepts of power and tradition. I reject you. How you entrust the future to the past, entrust life to slaughter. Therissa, the king, the chancellor, the leader of Babel. She showed everyone a path. Maybe it was too idealistic. Maybe her promises won't bear the thousand. And years of the hatred of the sarcasm, but that's not now, not your choice. Yeah, I'm still pretty sus of Therasis and his true goals. I mean, he was the one who, he's, from what I understand, he's, from what the story's told us so far, he's the one who got Therasa killed in the first place, and yet now he talks about, oh, my sister tried, but she was killed. It was because you did it, you bastard. <laughs> and as far as I can tell, Sanguinch is mostly just helping because it's fun for him. <laughs> You laugh at my weakness, say it's not my place to talk about the sarcasm with you, or you'd mock Logos. We're not making use of the blood you've awakened just now. O King of Sarcas, you eavesdrop on my thoughts. Is that your ability? Then of course you know what I'm going to say. I do. But we've never said the sarcasm should give up. We've never said the suffering is justified. On the contrary. 
those rebels who awaken their suffering and hardship from the abyss of hatred. They'll be much, much stronger than you. The lost homeland of sarcasm is not the history you keep looking back to an eon ago. It cannot be a slogan, a fantasy, or a symbol. It's right here, where the sarcasm came from, in the city called Kazdell, where many real people live, people that you've only condemned to a void of ideas. You've imagined a present from the past, and the real future can never be born. It's time to stop, vampire. Did another one of a ring shatter. That might be a problem. Yep, sending splinters flying. Cold anger burns as she scrutinizes the enemy before her. She thought her anger would rise, burning like a fire that could scorch the ocean. But no, that's not what's happening. She feels more than just anger, also an intense sadness. Yeah, that's a yeah. A break of Amiya's breaking is a big deal. The sarcasm of people who've lost their homeland. Yes, they believe it's only through violence and war they can reclaim what's lost. It's easy to blame them with cliche words of morality, justice, and kindness. Words that have been spoken over and over again, even as war continues and hatred spreads, because this is how the world treats them. This world is imposed in violence and war. So then, what's wrong with eye for an eye? Where's the crime blood for blood? Every king of sarcasm has operated on these principles, so of course the war never stops. Yeah, if the king of sarcasm has been following the same road all this time, and, nothing, and it just keeps repeating, that's kind of a sign that things need to change. So how can the system be broken? Even Theresa failed. What do you th think you are? Yes, even she failed. That's why Theresa needs me. The doctor and Dr. Calcet need me, and that's why I'm here. I, as the Revenant called me, as you called me, as so many Sarkaz believe me to be the Outblood, the weak, the king of Sarkaz, stand down! The Obsidian Decree transforms into Judgment of the King, stabbing the scorched blood. The thick red finally dissipates. <clears throat> the vampire takes a few steps back, raising his hand to wipe away the blood that flows from his nose and mouth. His body is damaged, and his white clothes are stained with blood. You can't fight anymore, Sanguinark. It's time for this battle to end. It was sarcasm. Won't you give me that vision of emptiness? Don't you want to peer into my thoughts, my sorrows and pain? You can reprimand me, reject me. Countless sarcasm believe this is the power of the king. You say I've corrupted my court, but what about you? O oh, king, the sarcasm take your direction, your path. My people follow you, expecting you to exploit their flesh and blood, their lives and their very souls. Their blind faith is ridiculous. I sneer at the king's comfort, but I have seen it. My elder brother was a king of sarcasm. What a lofty title, what a transcendent role. He was looked to as the leader, our guiding light. He was a natural savior, the one who would pull us out of our misery. What was the reality? What kind of people has the Black Crown chosen? In the beginning, he was indeed magnificent. The Diablo walked the path of punishment, the Goliaths roared the fearless calamity, but they found themselves betrayed by the cowardly, sold out by the selfish, and this is our curse. The king killed the king. Succession of the crown often comes with death. The vile always prevail. As such, the crown was besmirched by short-sighted fools. The weak begin to appear among the kings. They are narrow-minded, focused on toying with the power held in their hands. They become no better than the hypocritical lords among the elders and ancients. The power they stole from others clouded their vision. The focus of my people's faith turned from fearless warriors to vermin hiding in their palaces. They even brought shame, born by the name Sarkaz. But the crown continued to make its laughable choices right up to my brother. I thought surely he'd be the hero we waited for. He, on the other hand, had the audacity to say to me the Sarkaz could no longer afford to continue war. That it would take generations. That it would take generations to rebuild Kazdel. Even the skeleton beneath our feet knows Kazdel. We should rebuild was never meant to be a city. And that the king of Sarkaz should be the one to stand before them all. How can a man like that deserve to hold a single drop of Tikaz's blood within his body? You see it. I see a bloody civil war. The carpets of the palace are soaked red. A vampire lying in the arms of another. The legend of the toppled blood prince. He died in a civil war. You're his kin. Did you fight in that war? No. No, of course not. Did I fight? I shattered the crown myself. I remembered it like yesterday. My hand pierced his chest. The lipid Tikaz blood danced on my fingertip, finally entering my veins. He turned his head to me, grabbed my clothes. The king of Sarkaz showed his illusory vision to his murderer before he died. The vision of what should have been bestowed as an honor. What I witnessed, peace. As you said, Cottus, blood is not synonymous with death. I stood in a valley, in a quiet village, a doctor, a doctor laughing as he spoke, stitching up wounds to the injured. An injured man tells the doctor that his quarry has patched a particularly... His quarry was particularly ferocious, but he eventually went out. The courtyard hangs in freshly harvested beast meat, and the doctor is me. 
But this made me uncontrollably angry. How tragic, how meaningless, shameful. My brother actually believed that a false peace could deceive me. He was horrifically wrong. He thought I was blinded by hatred. No, I know what peace is, and that's why I feel so restless. We long to be great and powerful, true tea cause. I absorbed my brother's blood to my body and watched the black crown vanished. But you did not ascend to the throne of King of Sarkaz. And I do not regret that. If I could, ch if it could choose a formidable leader, I would be genuinely delighted. But this crown disappoints me time and time again. Each time I'm more disappointed. My brother's successor was a wandering vagrant. The next was a lumberjack. If it weren't for the records held by Kemphasari, these people would not even be remembered at all. Later, a king who ruled Kazdal was killed by a monster called Scalcet in the sight of a coalition army. Then came Therasa and Therasus. They were impressive, but also frustrating. Therasa, immersed by her fantasies, wasted her strength, much like my weak elder brother. And her successor turned out to be a cot, so no blood. Things being what they are, the crown's choices being absurd. Even as existence brings humility and hope to my people, I would rather bury it beyond the reach. Let it be truly lost and forgotten to history. Monster called Calcet. Yeah. Even the lore from the uh, live 2D skin that I do own, as you probably noticed. Uh, as Calcet has done quite a few questionable things, that's for sure. But of course, this is a very complicated situation. Although I will say that uh, it's a... Uh, the Sanguinarch certainly seems to hate the idea of considering, hmm, maybe he, um, he, the crown has a reason for choosing these people? No, uh, clearly the crown has been wrong every time and it has to be me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No reflection. Oh, you're still struggling. I mean, I don't give him a chance. You're weakening as well. However tarnished the crown may be, its weight is not something an infantile little bunny could wear. It seems the Confessari eager to, are so eager to manipulate the crown are going to blather some nonsense at me. Take another look around. If you die, there'll be no more successors. Or maybe you'd place the crown on the moons. The flowing blood surges towards the Sanguinarch's body. The white-haired Sarkaz stands proudly once again. How can he still fight? The King's Arch should have pierced his body, leaving it unable to regenerate. He's using blood to fill the holes in his flesh, using it to mend his wounds. He's a marionette now. you become more proficient in the use of the King's power, Cautus. But your admo- Missions, warnings, judgments, and proclamations are nothing but jokes. Ignorant little rabbit, the crown over your head represents no responsibility or authority. King of Sarcas, I'm not going to only foolish to spit out the king. Out of the crown itself. Okay, so I do finally get why he teleported us to this strange pocket dimension looking area. It's so that after he kills Amia, the crown won't have any more successors it can possibly pick. It'll basically end. Even though he knows very well the Confessor will be pissed off and give him an earful because, you know, earlier they made it clear they wanted to steal the power for themselves. It'll basically be lost. <laughs> the once vibrant red that filled the entire space no longer exists. Only a bit of crimson oozes from Sanguinox's pupils. When the Sarkas lose the king on which they are so dependent, then perhaps they will wake up from the shameful dream of a coming salvation. I accede to your statement that those awakening from the dream will be much more powerful, and that is why you cannot defeat me. How can the fallen consciousness of the Sarkaz resist me, who once carried the blood of the Tikas? The polluted cannot defile the pure, and the impure cannot touch the limpid. Your origin lies in the Tikas, a long line you can only climb. We are the rebels. I decree, therefore I correct. Blood and fire extinguish face to doom. Look out, Logos. A touch of the crimson appears from nothing. The space once occupied by the Banshee is replaced by blood. Ugh, his blood, it's affecting me. Several times stronger than the Earth's circles. Yes, thanks to you, I've, I have also shed my blood here, and therefore, this place is now part of Kazdale. Who would have thought that as much as anyone assumed they knew the full length and breadth of this great land, the boundaries of our home still exploding, even this time and place? Sarkaz, myself proclaimed for Sarkaz kin. Watch with your blood. Carry on that which will never betray you, the boon of your blood. I take you back to the origin, and that is. A shadow pierces his chest. The threads of blood holding him together are severed. You. Sorry, Sarkaz boons don't do much for me. Ah, the Dark Knights. <laughs> Bunny! You, Sarkaz Provani, aren't Sarkaz. Hop to it. Weaken his binds. Emperor's Guard parallel? Seems that way. That's what I'm doing. His arts are crazier than I imagined. I can barely hear his thoughts. There's only red. It's all red. I almost got it. Another out blood. An unexpected development. The scent of your blood. Your Capernet. The goat race. Such a dull disguise. Let's have your blood suffocate you. Arr. Do you think such crude arts would let you kill a king of the Sarkaz royal court? 
course not. A heavy sword points directly at the Sanguinarch's head. You can't call something cliche as slaughter for awakening, Sanguinarch. You're still wandering around hate in hatred and destruction. You've never left the abyss. You're the ones who are still sleeping. Fire the traitors. King of Sarcas. Now, before he recovers, knock him off. An, an elegy begins to play. The wailing of the banshee weaves a mournful melody, and the waves beneath his feet sing a psalm song. A steady male voice harmonizes with the sound of bells, with moonlight as a prose. The bone whistle sounds itself before it is played. The distant howl, traversing time itself, strikes a crimson court. The moment I took my throne, the nails were already tied to my fate. None of us can escape. But what the eulogy mourns will not be your corpse, it will be all of our connections. The Sanguinar continues to struggle, blood gushing at his fingertips like claws carving deep scratches in the bleached skull of the Ferramit. His body disintegrates in the dirge only to reform blood. He is an icon of blood. As long as there is blood, he will continue to fight. I will not Banshee! Amia, um, yeah, join me. Explore the strings of the eulogy. Seek out the origin of the Banshee. Look at me. Look to the whales you once covered yours to avoid. We must end him here. I'll try. The Banshee's song echoes again. The ancient nails materialize, deterring it in creeping blood. The vampire still rises. A moment later, a rather tender feminine voice joins in the harmonic dirge. A proclamation of death, a sentence of rejection? No, not only. The melody is a kind of timidity, a lingering sadness. As the blood cools, the mood light changes. The hatred of the Sark has not unreasonable, and the vampire's vengeance is not unreasonable. However, this is by no means the promised future. Can the survivors have a future on a scorched earth? No. What do those siblings actually see? Banshee, listen. You have to have still have accepted my blood and my boon. You have not yet defeated yourself. <clears throat> what echoes here is no longer an elegy, only a sigh. A sigh that makes him uneasy. The heat of the explosion and weight of the sword makes the Sanguinar feel powerless for the first time. He looks at the small, ever so small, seeing a king of Sarkaz. He looks at that codice, so inferior to the Sarkaz. He looks at the black crown, such a meaningless curse. The history and illusions he trampled on, the bloodline inheritance, the revenge and unrivaled power all suddenly disappear. He feels a void beneath his feet. A figure in white falls from the skeleton. Ridiculous, even a myri the myriad souls mock me. Lord of the Banshees and King of Sarkaz, you keep these deserters around who ignore the past, and in the end you don't even dare to act yourselves. Oh, the vile always prevail. This is indeed our curse. The Outblood King has executed me. The King of Sarkaz resounds with nails, but you don't know how strong the ties of blood are. You try to judge. In the end, you did use the power within your blood. Two elegant singers offered me a dirge at the same time. When the time came, you could not resist the instincts that the blood that comprises who you are. Did you really kill me? No, I've returned the Tika's blood to where it belongs. Go and see. Go to Londinium, whispered Sarkaz. I'll be waiting for you behind the king, the behind a curtain of ruin. Such adaptability and command proficiency. I'm all too glad you're not my target. Ha ha! <laughs> oh! Oh, thanks for the watch, a little too. I stream just about anything here, so feel free to stop by if something catches your eye. Dang. <laughs> Unrelenting Challenger's Medal. <gasps> and I got my reward. Uh, 2 1. There we are. I found out the hard way that, um. Yeah, Delphine unfortunately requests way too many of the new mats, and that's unfortunately not a price I can pay. Because both of the upcoming Red Cert operators I intend to build, Diamond and Caper, they also demand quite a few. Oh, thank you. I've done VNs on this channel a little while, so it took a while to get used to it, but. I've enjoyed it a bit, even if I do have to get. I'm not the greatest actor, so I usually have to give characters exaggerated accents. <laughs> Disaster coalesces. Why should I help you, Sarkaz? 
Everyone returns. Kalsa tells them some blood to find Solula. Why should I help you, Sarcas? Do you think you saved me? I didn't die, though that doesn't even matter. This shell is merely a plaything I abandoned long ago. Besides, aren't the Sarcas the ones hunting me down? How much history have you seen? All that I have experienced. Rumors say you'll divulge a piece of truth or a hint at an omen. Tyler creatures treat my drifting ripples as hallucinations while indulging in them, and yet you harbor resent. After I was, uh... Lighted up by these lunatics, there's even a fallen angel carrying a part of me around. And what I've seen, I've heard, has actually gotten more interesting. Ah! He's referring to most of them in the lock and key, isn't he? On the contrary, what makes me feel absolute boredom are these so-called bulky histories and profound topics. Absolute boredom. You're not wrong on that. <clears throat> History has always repeat itself, repeated itself in this land. Looking at the past is now a means of looking towards the future as well. And so I've actually become a prophet in this life of mine, if you can still count my current form in the same life as before. I never thought of having such an identity. Then, are you looking for a new conclusion? Just how old do you think I am, you little rascal? There won't be any new conclusion to draw with the way all of you look like now. Yes, yeah, something strange has happened to all these decrepit bones of mine. A rabbit wears a sarcasm crown, and she threw and she together the male banshee are finding a vampire on top of my head. I had the feeling this was the Farron Mutt. They generally have godlike powers, so I guess I can't be su they're, so I guess I can't be surprised even being reduced to a skeleton with nerves would still be alive. Of course, that's the sheep. There's that sheep playing with the shadows who hangs around with you too, right? Um, are the news to me? A little perhaps, but you can't win. Seems so sure. We also belong to the history you've seen that has come full circle time and time again. There's never a shortage of those who resist on this great land, but they always follow the same trap. Besides, I understand the vampire's tricks. He was the one who peeled off my skin, after all. Let's have a little wager, Farron, but a strange bunch of people. Copper, nay, caught a spanchy sarcasm. They'll triumph over that vampire that tried on you. Are you trying to win my favor? Do you think I'll look at you differently for helping me? I couldn't care less about any of that, but what are you putting on the table? If we win, you'll lend us your help and bring us back to where we came from. And if you lose, well, we'll be dead by that point. <laughs> You're making an empty offer, little thing. Yeah, the ferment here has basically nothing to gain and, well, I guess, I'm not sure if he, it's anything to lose, but it's basically a one-sided bet where only he can't exactly benefit. He can't exactly benefit? <laughs> I accept. You really are easy to talk over. No, it's because I know all of you are just the waves I toss up that will calm to a still in the blink of an eye, so I might as well spare a little effort and raise my eyelids a little. You have indeed won by a minuscule move, but the bet's far from over. Did you really win? Did you triumph over the entity slaughter and blood the vampire represents? Why don't we expand our wager? I'll bring all of you back, and then continue waiting for you in the cycles of history. <coughs> Maybe I should have made him a bit more booming voice or something like that. Wait, it's Calcet. How long have, how long have they been gone? Three hours and fourteen minutes. Even a Sanguinar can bleed and die, right? We should trust them. It's all we can do. We're done with our combat mission as well. Our losses aren't light. The forces here were indeed well trained. Most of the Sarcas chose a fight to the end, but a small number chose to surrender. Hmm. You plan to execute them? That's how I wish to do so and so to the rest, but I refuse to let them die so simply. Perhaps it's difficult to put a trial on them during wartime. It's definitely a difficult task to judge just how much blood is on the hands of every terror-stricken Sarcas that laid down their arms. But if we just act like they do, we'll be no different from them. Bean, I'd like to take the responsibility of investigating the crimes committed by these Sarcas prisoners of war. I have a professional covert intelligence background as well, so I'm well versed in the ways to get them to talk. I know what you're worried about. Oh no, I'm not. I'll leave it to you. Alright. I won't let a single drop of blood go unaccounted for. Prepare for battle. The ferment will be back soon. Monster, stand by. There's no way we can be sure who will return be on this return trip. A gigantic skeleton finally reappears. The torrents of time seem to have washed away any trace of battle, and it hovers, no different than it was at any other point in time. Monster. Hey, let go of me. Uh, seems like a little hags. I think God are backing you up now. That's my last grenade, so I'll bite into it tight, you little freak. Angry howling. Put her down, monster. 
shitty luck today. I just wanted to give myself a ceremonial salute to announce my return. Didn't think I'd see an old hag with a scowl on her face once the skeleton dropped. W, don't forget we have to repair any structures you blew up here after taking over the place. Anything destroyed will be fixed by the same hand. Uh, what makes you think I'd even know how to fix this thing? I'll say, Doctor, we captured the Pheromut skeleton as well as the Commander Sola. The rest of the skeleton garrison have been eliminated. So you're THE Dame Calcet. I've heard so much about you. You're one of the Scar Market's people. You know every little thing that happened in Kazdo clearly, even from somewhere as far as Victoria. Seems like those old guys weren't lying. I'll have a talk with those old guys, as you call them. Though, when... through you when we're done with business here. They're the ones who stayed behind to watch over Kazdell, and the Lich have already contacted the military commission that currently governs the place. They'll be making their decision soon. Where's Amia and Logos? Doctor! Amia! The little Cottus crashes into your arms. There's blood all over. Are you hurt? I'm fine. The blood. It's the vampires. Amia. Your rings. You use them. Yeah. Let me see your hands. A ring on Amiya's hand is already disintegrated, leaving not a trace or fragment. I had to use it against him. I'm sorry. You become more skilled with using emotions and memories. Amiya, you fainted from using a ring before. Calcet will need to run another check on her. No, doctor, don't worry. I'm just kind of tired. The ring on your right index remains broken. Fortunately, that's just an effect of overexerting yourself. You're burning from rage again. Me? Angry? I thought I'd be angry at the Sanguinark vampires for slaughtering so many people. What I felt was not just that. There was also... sadness. Sadness. Calcet pauses briefly, and a pair of pink eyes always hiding sadness within flashes through her memory. A few seconds later, she comes to her senses and takes a second look at Amia's fingers. These rings are meant to help you adapt to the Lord of Fiend's power, and the surge of emotions come with it. Another ring is cracked. Perhaps we can do nothing but witness these wounds open again and again. Please don't worry, Dr. Calcet. No matter what I faced or who I face next, I won't fall before they do. The Sanguinarch of Vampires fell into some place we don't know about. His court remains, but no longer poses a threat to us. However, we failed to prevent the curse from being cast. It's coming from Lindinium. What's happening over there? The Self-Salvation Corps originally believed that cutting off the supply line would be a way to end the war, but things haven't changed. This war will not last for much longer. We need to hurry over. The skeleton might be able to become a new stronghold or an un... Unprecedented means of transport. Hopefully it can be put to good use. The decisive battle's right before us. Mm-hmm, the sarcas cannot be the culprits of the next calamity. Also, Dr. Calcet, the vampire's obsession, his hopes, what he called a curse, is Originium. Yes, the oldest Casdell came into contact with Originium before any other civilization did. It was not the remnants of a catastrophe or a mineral silently buried within rock formations. It was a hunk of Originium from antiquity. I see, so it's basically lost forbidden tech. Of some sort, and it birthed the oldest witchcraft and the most ancient infected. Ah, witchcraft is the basis for arts magic. So interesting. I might actually have. I meant to, I called it an old precursor tech out of uh, be thinking of something like from Star Control 2, but maybe I'm not far off actually. There's a reason they keep calling it arts and not magic, even though functionally it kind of is. Well, they do say any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. If the vampire truly knew this fact and developed his obsession from that, think he could grant him power, then it won't just be Lindinium's fate that's determined next. I see, so he's hoping to draw power from Originium itself, possibly even all of it. Back here again. Lindinium. Yes, after all we've been through, we're finally in Victoria's capital. But it's now completely surrounded by the Sarkaz and Duke's armies. God, quickly... Unfortunately, it's a little late for go poor guard. He never got to see this, poor guy. Possible. Arrange another oriopathy screening for our members. I know some of them are still deteriorating. Non-combatants will be stationed in this forest. First of all, take good care of them and keep in touch with us. Are we really going in there? Infected will be everywhere within the city, no matter how this war ends. Sarkas of Victorians, soldiers and nobles, even farmers, workers, and traders. They won't be able to judge their own identities so quickly. Perhaps they won't even realize until peace returns, and they're once again marginalized, and then it hits them. I was reminded of this because of what happened to Guard. But no matter. We have to let every infected of this land know that our flag flies high once again, and more importantly, what it stands for. 
One day, when they become prisoners again, they'll think of our flag as they realize the justice on this land must be won through struggle. What's the plan? We'll split up. It won't happen overnight. Other people can handle the task of eradicating the disease, while we'll make sure the oppression can no longer be tolerated. We'll need to directly demonstrate this with our strength. In Victoria, we need to, at the very least, nine. <clears throat> There's a fire on the other side of the hill, 100 or 200 meters away from most. It's glowing an unnatural hue. Percival, how long has it been since the scouting team last replied? Uh, let me go check. Yeah, it's longer than our estimations, but this isn't the first time, and our comms equipment is just junk after all. I'll go ask Red. Tallulah stares at the flames. There's no reason or omen, only a strong feeling. She smells the stench of death cast by the firelight. <clears throat> a lot of story threads are starting to come together now, it seems. <clears throat> I didn't know your highness would be here in person. This is only a trifling swarm of infected with weapons. Weak, and pitiable people forced to unite and fight. <sighs> Even if there is a surviving Draco among them. Confirm our identity and handle everything on your behalf. I'm not blaming you, of course. Hmm, have the scouts located the target? Yes, it's consistent with our intel. However, with all due respect, why do we have to be so concerned with her this much? Even if she has the Red Dragon's blood, her identity will only pose a slight detriment to your claim. But if her intel is accurate, her current identity is that of an infected, so what does she mean to... Infected? Hmm. Don't we know another infected Draco as well? My sister will soon return to my side. Just think of it as eliminating some unnecessary variables to nourish the soil between us. We can... A Draco? <laughs> I've never come into contact with a Draco outside my own family before. All of you wait here. Yeah, the events of Firelight caused Reed to uh, embrace her flames of life and to seek to assist her sister, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to end that well. What I've learned from Oblana is that she has no trouble using and discarding things as they are useful to her. She didn't even have someone go by to check if her sister was okay. She just had them finish her off so she, if, so they, they, she wouldn't be able to reveal any secrets. I don't know what's going to happen when they actually meet. Frankly, I don't trust her. At least that's my personal interpretation. It could be that she's actually a nice person all this time. On that note, if you are absolutely curious, yes, Zerny with his skill 1, Iblanus in Firelight Cast absolutely could not kill him. It was hilarious. No matter how much of the arts damage she brought out, she was impossible, incapable of killing him. So Zerny I have entirely because I like his play style and such, but, and character, but he's got a few perks, that's for sure. Yeah, Arts Guard's actually quite good at Arts Tanking as well. Surprisingly. I actually built both him and Shalom, but I ended up liking Zerny more, so I ended up going with him. I still have Shalom if I need to use him ever, but honestly, he's uh, basically just a 5-star Durnar, which is good, don't get me wrong, especially since Zest 2 can even hit aerial targets, something I use during, uh, uh, ideal cities boss fight, but uh, I guess I just ended up liking Zerny more for whatever reason. Ah, oh, we wait here. I shall take a look for myself. Ah, oh, careful. Thank you. Swamp's miserable to wade through. Yeah, our supplies are low and people aren't getting enough to eat. We haven't been able to get any decent medication either. Need my help? No, no thank you. I walked all the way from Ursus, so this isn't so different from back then. Tallulah's footsteps slow down. The group slowly marches next to her through the shrubs and reeds. The rustling sounds are quieter than silence itself. What is it? Nine, can you release those restraints? And on your arts, too. You should be well aware you're not allowed to use your Arginium arts. Those are your yo confetters. You're Tallulah the hero, only when before a Victorian came patriots. I'm not a hero or anything like that. I just don't want history to repeat itself because of me. Does not finish her sentence. Flames of death ignite from the depths of the swamp, encircling the confusion. What's going on? Where does fire come from? All units on alert. What is that? An ominous deep purple climbs up to Nine's body before she can finish speaking, engulfing her in death instantly. Cold flames of death slowly swallow everything. Reunion infected. Another group of pitiful, pitiable people fighting against their pitiable fate. Tenacious, powerful, magnificent. 
and yet completely unaware they're involved in yet another lamentable conspiracy. Draco and Aslan, Red Lion, Dragon and Lion, you people who rose up from Ursus were actually led to where you stand today by a descendant of the Red Dragon, who will ultimately bring about your demise, Tallulah Artorius. What sort of woman are you, Draco? If you're deserving of my attention, come forth from death. Sparks fly as death's vice, the dead branches and reeds reduced to ashes. The flowers are still in bloom. They are rejecting death. Flowers? To think there would even be flowers that can withstand my flames? Nine. I'm fine. These flames are special. Yes, yeah, she came before me, so I'll handle her. Many of us here are not combat ready. You have to keep them all safe. Reunion will put on, pull on your chain. You haven't been judged, so don't die just yet. The flames of death are cut open. No, her death is blocked by delicate vegetation, ignited by flames of fury. Fire ignites fire. The infected turns away from her. Yeah, Ablana has flames that bring the, of death that kill and bring back the dead, for, while Reed has the flames of life that restore life. That life. She's never been ignored like this before. Iblana comes to her senses at once. The gaze of the Draco named Tallulah never shifted away from her. Raging flames cleave into mortal flame. Emotion reads emotion. Tallulah tears into Iblana. The void is now washed in blood. Iblana laughs. Ah, <laughs> Tallulah Tarius, daughter of Edward, and legitimate heir to the Victorian throne. You're, this is your true self. We have nothing to do with each other, Draco of Dublin. Is that for you to say? Just look at you, Red Dragon, how strong and powerful you are. And yet, despite your might, you once again willingly toss aside the glory of the Red Dragon to the Aslan so easily to let them trample the red carpets of Westalog. Victoria is a country founded by Draco Taluda. Why do you only resist? I can smell an unimaginable fury in your flames. Do you not crave it? How can that be? Fury? Do you still wish to continue playing house with the infected? How are you this narrow-minded? Infected, the status does not merit mention. You step over it, disregard it, save it. I give you your chance now, Tallulah. I can disregard your infected status. Even this pitiful mutual aid program you control. Your flames move me, Tallulah. Stand with me, and I pledge that everything you desire shall be realized into reality. Come to my side, submit to me, and the Tara shall stand together with you. Our careers hold no conflict with each other at all. Both you and this infected movement need of yours need an end more powerful and prosperous than this. Are you finished speaking? <laughs> You, Draco, your eyes have only desire in them. A desire to free Tara, exact revenge on Victoria, fulfill your own desires, or perhaps you have yet to grasp even what lies exactly lies in the depths of your desires. Fury, it's true, and I won't deny it. And that's why, come any closer, and my flames will consume you whole. Fire, fury, a calm fury. It burns at the extremities of her death. <laughs> I'm not interested in the Draco's lineage, power, or the country. You, do you lead the Terran's resistance with such narrow-sighted narrow desire and ideals? If so, then perhaps it's better if I cut you down, here and now. Truly a pity. Uninterested in lineage, power, nor country? Our history summarized. An imaginary crown, instigated resistance. Well enough said. Perhaps I don't know what's going on, or perhaps it could be... Could it be? Do you think I'm indulging myself with my actions? You shall be my most powerful vassal, though my subjects are eager for me to kill any other Draco uh, to uphill living Draco to uphill uphold my legitimacy. They don't know why exactly I wish to establish a nation. And you know it yourself? Of course. My si and my sister will do it in my stead. Don't leave your affairs to your fam for your family to do. You're the one ruining the lives of others with utter disregard. Death is only my prisoner. <clears throat> No, death is taken for granted or without meaning. All without power will die worthy deaths. All with power will die worthy deaths. Is that truly up for you to decide? Haven't you recognized yet that your manners, gentleness, affection, even your arrogance and scorn are all fake? You're just a hypocritical tyrant despite your bombastic words. Death is just a scepter for you to branch your authority, and you're not the first tyrant I've met either. Stay away from your union. What an extremely dull answer. But your answer will change in the end, so it's a pity for you to die here. Reunion, indeed, those flowers death could not burn are equally deserving of affection. 
So what if I tell you Dublin's forces will exterminate every last one of Re Reunion's members if you refuse to submit? What will you do then? You wish for us to be enemies? I don't know what happened in the time you spent drifting about Ursus after leaving Victoria, but I can feel it. Your flame is strong and weak, profound and superficial, angry and remorseful. She's, I, she's a sinner from Reunion. Don't think too highly of yourself, Draco. Ah, the little flower. Your team's not too far away. You must be concerned for her. It doesn't matter. This isn't the first time Reunion has gone up against a strong foe. Dublin's forces, you've already erred by not calling your high-speed battleships immediately. We can kill you before your drones arrive. I'll do my best everything it takes. Your desire and ambitions. We don't care for them, and I'm in no mood to listen to your red dragon chat with Tallulah. All I know is that you'll die, for sure. Enough with that look. All of us have no wish for this to continue, correct? <clears throat> All right, Tallulah, other descend to the Red Dragon. If Even if you reject me, your actions have wholly nothing to do with my Terra. But your fear, resistance, pa desires, and answers, your end lies with me as well. Let's treat today's meeting as a first prophecy. Tara's loyal servant shall come here one after another. Go, Reunion. Bring some chaos to Victoria and create some opportunities for us. The next time we meet, one Red Dragon is bound to bite the other to death. All right, so I guess she's effectively declared war and Reunion. Or a temporary ceasefire, I guess. Oh, Chen. That's enough hiding. Come out already. It's only become more humid after night falls, and you won't be able to light the firewood. Who who are you? You're infected. Doesn't matter. I'm the same. I won't harm you or anything. You know, as heavily criticized as Chen Summer, as Chen Alter is, I actually do appreciate that she actually is treated as a genuine continuation of this one from the story. I mean, she's even classified as a Rhodes Island member rather than a member of Lungman, like her... Uh, Sword, like her sword form, her guard form is. <laughs> so yeah, if they are going to keep doing all I'd appreciate if they at least uh, kept up with the uh, actual character stuff. Kind of like how Gavi Alter, I know not everyone likes her, but I do pr like, I do get it. Like her four star version is entirely her intentionally not using her physical strength because she wants to be a healer, and her alter form is her when she actually fights like that. It's also why I can get why so many want uh, Shining Alter or Siege Alter. Hoping for Siege Altar myself. As you notice, I don't have many at max level, and that's because I only really level them to max if they're a particular favorite or I feel a particular desire to. There's no need to be so wary. I'm not lying. I really am infected. You're not a Victorian? I'm from Yan. What's the Yan East doing here? My family came here for business. I got caught up in the war. I was going to evacuate with them, but I accidentally contracted Oreopathy. So they left me behind. Everyone's unfair and unaffected everywhere. Your lecture sucks. We can't help you either. I can tell. You don't even have a way to start a fire, so you probably have no arts users. You don't seem to be hunters either, so you don't won't live more than a few days. Getting captured by the military as infected or Sark as a Victorian. Either way is a terrible way to go, right? So, I can help you get a fire going at least. Watch. Whoa, it's really burning. Was that easy? Thank you so much, Yenny's lady. What about you? Do you need us for anything? The sky is getting dark. Can I rest here for the night? I'll leave at first light tomorrow. How's a foreign refugee like this calm and unru unruffled in your sword? Even I can tell that's no ordinary blade. You're right, I'm what they call a Zibao. Oh, like the me in Yan, like the messengers here. Pretty skilled, and not a stranger to traversing averse conditions here. Surviving the wild isn't that difficult for me. You hope to start a fire, I'll leave it at that. I'll admit, what we did, even if it's the soldiers you find out, as long as sarcasm don't catch us. It's not like they'll reward you with a feast. Is that worth discussing when we didn't even climb? We don't even have a crumb to eat right now. Those reunion crazies. They're the reason it's so dire for us right now. Reunion? You haven't heard? Well, you've only been recently infected, after all. They're abandoned infected. We were counting on them to be our saviors. You fought over something? Ah, uh, we robbed a Sarkaz, but they're of the opinion we killed one of the infected countrymen. Sarkaz, countrymen. My daughter's dead because of them. My daughter, my girl. Oh. Hmm, do they have a leader? Nine. Yeah, she's the one who chased us away. There's another one they called Guard, but he's dead. Uh, I want to roast something for dinner. I don't know what reunion is exactly, but the group we encounter were a bunch of hypocrites who belong in a dumpster. What? Uh, you want me to shake hands with sarcasm and make peace? I'll be the next one I see to death. Right, remember those rumors we heard of the Ursus Tundra, Tallulah. Here are the infected. She didn't seem all that much to me. I remember she was always trailing behind Nine, never saying anything more than a few words. The hearsay from those old infected weren't worth shy. Maybe um, Nine might have been the actual decision maker all along. Uh, this is useless banner. It's too late for you to join the Muniz fella. Where'd they go? How would I know? Back when I left in a huff with this guy in tow, I remember there being a messenger station in this direction, about a dozen kilometers. An early rest for us today, then. 
We have to get back on the road tomorrow. Nothing unusual to report. Did you hear? The Duke seemed to have bumped into each other. Duke Windermere sacrificed herself, and the other lords can no longer sit still either. Ugh, the Madam's legendary tail was still in my mobile terminal. Legends are useless now, but you know who she was keep who was keeping watch here at Chetley before he took command? I thought the Sarkas seized this place long ago. Could have been stragglers from some army, maybe the Londinium Self Salvation Corps. Rumors bound they're still active. That's ace. They managed to stand up the Sarkas even though there's no decent equipment to be found. Yeah, there are definitely veterans roaming around the country who can take a hundred alone. Right? No way they're just some local thugs or worker. <sighs> Scouts sent their intel. Basically, it's pretty much what the commander predicted, which is po impossible to predict. Eh, send to the tent. I can't make heads or tails of it. The Sarkas army is just too un unconventional. Sure. Wait. The scouts say they detected a strange squad identification code. Want to pour it together? Exemplars? Is that the name for the War of Four Nations? I must tell them. Our scouts saw a specter. Ooh, the exemplars. <laughs> I try to vaguely make Bagpipe sound like the Demo Man from Team Fortress 2. I do like her English voice acting, by the way, and actually do have her. I used to use her a lot to just make sure Siege and Saga begin with their S2 have a charge immediately upon deployment, but it was pointed out to me that that does still kind of break the meta rule. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, honestly, but uh, because the thing that makes Bagpipe so popular is her Flagpipe strat, and I do not use Flag Bearers, since, as mentioned, I prefer Vanguards that can fight. So, Pioneers, Agents, those are my jam. I'd probably like Tacticians, too, but my only one built right now is Black Knight, who is a little situational. I should probably give her a try more later, though. Example. Ooh, know anything about him? No, I'm from the Duke of Fife's 4th Infantry Battalion. Uh, that's no longer important. Why? Oh, it'll just affect it now, and I'm basically a deserter. Ha, both a wee bit of a pickle, aren't we? I didn't think I'd have to be so overcautious here in Chetley. Bagpipe, I can't find this funny at all. Chetley's now under the army's jurisdiction, so are we. Eh, uh, I'm sure you have no clue how enchanting the hay piles are this time of year. I want to celebrate me our chums back home, too. But I can't expose myself so easy like that. They treat deserters no better than foul beasts on the chopping block for dinner. You're a good one, miss. I'm sure you can sort this misunderstanding out. Tell me that on your back and I might have believed you. The Exemplars. Ain't that the Tempest Platoon's former name? Still following me? Oh, you seem strong and we haven't eaten in the past few days. We're a fellow infected, aren't we? We'll travel together a little while more. You might be able to see more of see the station you mentioned after this hillside. Where it's been smashed to bits. Wait, over there. People, right? Alright, stay calm. The numbers are limited at least. Wait, hold on, the Victorians, I can see them. Are they a squad of refugees? I can see soldier guards, too. What do we do? This is much better than running into sarcasm. We're infected. Are we going to be... The infected already banned us, so might as well ask them for food and starve to death. It's hard to think about it. How many people are going to emerge from this war with Oreopathy? Surely they'll live somehow. Of course, definitely, for sure. I'll go take a look. Hey. Heavens, what's going to happen if the soldiers do turn hostile? Uh, Yuri and Yusuf, I think you can ease up the anxiety. Look, they seem to be getting along. Oh, it really looks like it. He's waiting. I'll go over. Waving. I'll go on over. Chen watches the two mingle with their compatriots. Vigilance, talking, casual chatting. Soon, someone puts arms on their shoulders, and the chatter reaches Chen's ears. She stayed at the spot for a long time. Young East Lady. I talk to them. We could travel. Wait, where'd she go? You beat a Sarkaz death? Hell yeah, you're our heroes. Yeah, what he failed to mention is that that's not a soldier, where that would actually... Where you could actually consider that to be productive, I guess. Uh, a weird way to put it, I guess, but... You finally repaired, replied to my invitation, Duke Gordon. It seems that even you now realize how serious the situation is. Oh yes, it's gotten so serious that our Duke Caster has actually left her territory to grace the front lines in person. A Victorian Duke has died on the battlefield. How many years has it been since something like this has happened? Quite a few of our fellow nobles suspect you may you behind her back, you know. After all, everyone knows you never go along with Duke of Windermere. And that stubborn Windermere would never support your little plot to take over Londonium. But I know it wouldn't be you. You're welcome from any loss she suffers, even though they're major, but now your problems have only increased with her death. In fact, all of us here have attracted a very big problem. There are rumors from the outside 
Hey, that the young Duke Gordon today is obsessed with nations of notions of romance and lacks the wisdom and wits of his house. It seems that our country has become so weak we've exhausted our ability to understand people. Oh, don't flatter me. I'm only inclined to care about other matters. I'm only disinclined to care about other matters, yours included. Alas, why does this war compel us to face our responsibilities? All I can do now is walk to the winery and throw myself down on the t table as of today. As for this end, I've even brought a friend. It's not easy to bring him off of his high-speed battleship. To think of the Duke of Wellington. What grace with his presence? Oh, my time grows short. I hear you met with some troubles on the front line. The Nazareth King is not an easy enemy to deal with. Oh, no more than just a sarcasm. Oh, you must take care of yourself. After all, you're already... I'm not at an age... <clears throat> I'm not at an age where you need to tell me how old I am. The stalemate on the front line will soon end, and Windermere's defeat will have a minimal impact on the war situation. We'll be able to reform the front lines in no time. Your valiant march onwards has caused the ducal armies to clash with Sarkar's military on all fronts. It's not enough. We must execute an effective offense and then continue defending our fragmented defenses to win this war. Our counterattack must begin. I agree. A rare sight to see two of you in agreement. Londinium is now officially declared to be under Sarkar's occupation. This means they no longer have a need to hide. This does not bode well for us at all. Yeah, the only way they'd be so bold is to say that the capital city is now theirs is if they know they have something that can keep it from being easily retaken. <clears throat> All my fellow follow-up units will be assembled in three days. We first suffered some losses in the previous war, but Wellington's battleships will be the first to rush the storm. I'll participate as well. I'll see two other Dukes of Normandy and Fife join our efforts. Albuquerque and Ashworth will, of course, be also be reasonable people. One unprecedented sight to behold, the Dukes speeding the Londinium on their battleships to shell the city walls. I hope there will not. I hope there will not be a second time. I inform our troops that I will take command of this battle. Naturally. If, then, if you'll excuse me, there are many matters waiting for me. Handle the front line. What they don't know is that he's actually been working with Dublin, so this giving him all that power is absolutely going to backfire. And just like that, truly a swift and decisive man. I grew up listening to tales of the Empire's death knell, but I didn't think his hair would actually turn completely white. Uh, forming military alliance with the other dukes used to be an earth-shaking affair, but look at us now. We can't even have a presentable meeting. Judging from his words, he'll become a stubborn old man, unwilling to admit setbacks. Duke Castor, I know nothing of war, but look in old Wellington's condition. I fear we won't be able to completely trust him. Castor? A trust. No, this is nothing. I merely recalled some past events from my youth. Old Wellington, he conceals his impatience with ease, and even his shortcomings. He is getting older as well. But he can't fool me. It's all fake. You've known him for a long time. For far too many years, even when I was just a little girl with no experience. What are your thoughts on the matter? This look in his eyes, he spoke of the Nash here, was exactly the same as it was in his youth. Be it friend or foe, he is like a beast thirsting to tear with the other to feast on their blood. To rip out the entrails, chew bones, hunt, devour, grow. He's always been this sort of warrior. Hmm, the old man's appetite's always been good. Who was it already in Duke Wellington's belly when you met him? Ivan Jovanich. Harkvashorn. As well as Kasaka the first. I see, you were really uh, quite young back then. There used to be a saying among the nobles in the Castor's territory regarded. There used to be a saying among the nobles in Castor territory regarded as an ominous symbol. Victoria only has one true duke after the four of the four, four of the four nations. Oh, we restricted and weakened him. Meh. For that fort more than sixty years. After that fort more than for sixty years, the people forget about heroes in peacetime. The nobles repel the death and all the fear. He revealed his fatigue earlier, but I think of, uh, and I've always, I've always been thinking of something. That smile on his face when we were both young, flashed towards the endless expanse of the battlefront. He stood side by side with the Emperor Versus. He witnessed the Witch King's arts. He saw the greatest of monarchs and dismantled the largest modern cities to exist back then. How can someone like him willingly throw himself at the slaughter? Hmm. So telling me, our man who has no choice but to swallow his pride for decades and might still be Victoria's strongest general has divulged his true feelings. The other one invited in the table. You know he has a trump card up his sleeve. I'm feeling a little chilly. The window outside tonight's rather strong. Chilly. Be sure not to catch a cold, Duke. Uh, of course not. Be at ease. Despite what everyone says about me, I really am lazy. I would much rather stay in my lovely estate, appreciating the countryside view, than be on a battleship. But I do like winter. I got it. Return green with the radio equipment again. Didn't I already tell you multiple times closure? Our recent patrols haven't gone far enough to pick any signals up from inside Londinium. 
and I already said so many times, I'm a Rhodes Island engineer. Look, my equipment's basically made for Rhodes Island communications and now receive signals from other channels after many modifications. Let's see. The Didium Self Salvation Corps broadcast. <laughs> Repeat. Commander Clovisia and other members who have not left are still fighting. Repeat, need backup. Commander Clovisia, I knew she and the others were fine. We need to hurry and tell everyone. Great, they'll all, they're all right and I'm done drag debugging this tool in my hand. Wait, there's another message in the channel. It can't be. What happened to Blaze and the rest with her? What's with all the irregular infected? Electric noise. The disembarkment application. Victoria's been approved. Local branch operators make preparations. Repeat. <clears throat> so many books here, but not even a vegetable stem to be found. Number of books won't matter if we don't find any stems. Are you sure we can find something edible here? If we don't, we can just kick down some door after, when they put up a fight. Where it took them all away. Ugh, I'm beat. Life was so much simpler before. Swing our sword, cut someone down, swing again, cut another, then boom, money. But now we can't even find a single stem to eat. Is Undinium still considered Victoria's now? I mean, we occupied it. Does it count as a new city of ours? So, of course, I don't know. All I know is that the clouds have been gathering on top of that building. It's really weird. What's there to worry? That's where the region is. Do you hear a strange noise? Huh? Nah. <laughs> strange. Ah, the steam knight. A huge figure emerged from the shadows as a rays of light blazes through the deathly still streets. It raises its heavy arm and then head she drops it. Is it Charles Lynch? The armor falls to silence like it was an illusion. A faint fire seeping from its helmet is the only sign that still lives. <gasps> she stretches out her hand to touch the knight, but is forced to refrain from the residual heat of the armor. It's silent. Wait, is that? Huh. I wondered if maybe she was actually the one in the armor, like she defeated Lynch and then took the armor herself, but no, it seems somehow she was able to talk him into... Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, there's a, this chapter's actually had a lot going on. We can definitely tell that all the plot threads are finally coming together. Which is good, because while I did like the story of chapter 12, well, first of all, I hated the, uh, mechan the citizen mechanic and all that. That was not fun, having to identify them all and all that. But also, if, well, I did like what went on. It was mostly a bunch of stuff that was kind of the side, yeah. It was mostly a bunch of side stuff that's just... Get it? That's um. That was mostly set up for this chapter or for Blunt. Granted, it does. Uh, it did introduce some characters I do like, like Delphine and the uh, brawler guy. But your highness, what are you looking at? Dark clouds. The shards' energy is gathered. According to Confessari research, a device like this is able to manipulate Originium reactions. Will also be able to control that piece of Originium. The Dukes have begun mobilizing forces in a few days. No, I don't mean the clouds here. What's about to happen? Lindium is set in stone. Manfred, you were born in Kasdale. What does it look like in your memories? It was already the hub of your nomadic city when I was growing up. My memories of the place, the sky was overcast, even worse than Victoria, to be honest. There was always a pungent sense of industrial waste in the air. It, would you call that place home? I would. Really? I was thinking how we Sarkas always travel within a haze. <clears throat> we're determined to tear the clouds apart. I did, yeah, I guess I did really like chapter 11. I like this one. So I guess it's only chapter 12 that's kind of a lull. Like I said, I didn't dislike this plot that's going on, but also felt like it was... Uh, it was a lot more simple than... Because, <clears throat> like, it had a lot of setup with the Dukes wanting to take control of the airship, the crew's in here, but it, the airship is itself is a giant revenant, so that went nowhere. Trilby Asher kind of all, seemed all threatening, but... Well, even the start of this chapter, they started getting their asses kicked, so... So much for them. Things finally revealed. The true calamity will follow. Will we make it in time? I hope the light I've been looking at can still shine then, even if I'm already in the depths of darkness. Hmm. Phew. That was definitely a lot. 
I'm absolutely exhausted, so well, I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Doesn't look like anyone I usually uh, raid is streaming right now, so... Oh well. Next time I'll prob definitely be getting back to Kakara and I'll see how things go. I probably... Well, I'm probably not gonna do the Arturia event on stream since I have to do a lot of stuff there. Or, since I need to farm that... Uh, one of the drops in that event, if, to my understanding, is one I really, really need, so I'd rather not delay that. But I'll definitely do the EX stages on stream. We'll see how that goes. Even more fun. That's something to look forward to. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I'm not going to use any niche or whatever for the H stages, but I'm going to do those on my own time because I am absolutely exhausted right now, so... Alright, well, until next time, thank you for watching. Hope you had a good time, and I'll see you later.